Happy opening day, Chris. Yeah, happy opening day, everybody. What a, I mean, this this is maybe the best non-holiday day in America. Agreed. Especially when it's not raining in Philadelphia. Uh, yeah, we 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 both have to wait for our teams until tomorrow. We do, we do. But that's it. Kind of removes any stress is the wrong word, but it like removes any real. Yeah, kind of. Uh, we kind of can just relax that. and and catch these games and not have to worry too much. Yeah. Uh, yeah so I, I uh, Shelly the Turtles I mean, says Steel got hurt. He is he is he down? Great. Yeah, Steel, Steel left that game. I, I looks like Jamie Kerrigan saying it was a, a hamstring injury. I didn't see what it was. I did see Eesh. right before he we went on that that he left. I tell you the the the, the Twins Royals game is, is a really fascinating game, and that we saw like. The potential of that twins team and also the reality of that twins team like pretty quick like incredible talent but god damn it they cannot stay on the field no their best players cannot play 80 games much less 160 yeah we also saw uh cole reagan to the royals look pretty goddamn uh unhittable for a good portion of that game yeah that's exciting for royals fans all that talk about an early early cy young favorite for him uh, good evening. Yes. Happy opening day to everybody, to you and yours, especially if your team is playing. Hopefully they did well. Uh, some exciting games, not where you thought you might see it, like the Pirates and Marlins ended up being kind of exciting. Uh, how about Juan Soto throw, uh, showing off his gold glove caliber defense, throwing somebody out? Yeah. I mean, I, was, yeah. As two hop throws to home plate go, that was a pretty that was a pretty good throw. And Jeff, I just want to test your terminology here. You did, You talked about... Um, an exciting uh, Pirates Marlins game to see, but I'm re- I, I don't know if anyone was actually seeing it. We're aware that it happened, but how many people were actively watching that game? I saw Ooh. it. Okay, good, good. <laughs> I saw it. At, I mean, at, at the time, it was the only game on, so uh, I got to see the extra innings there. Some oh. some boneheaded base running and some uh, the I got I got to feel bad for the people fantasy players who have Bednar as their closer for the Pirates. He got up three straight innings, sat back down. When they finally get the save chance, a rookie who's never had a save comes out and gets it. So I don't know if like standing up and down three times was too much for Bednar. That's interesting. Yeah, I hope he didn't get hurt in the bullpen. That'd be terrible because he's they kept uh, he's showing him, up. and he was just standing there in his in his hoodie. So I don't know. Um, Shelly the Turtle says he was also watching the game. So it was a, it was a oh, I think MLB actually cut to it uh, there at the end. Yeah. But, uh, but Davo, uh, Davo here makes a good point. Uh, Betts got to be the early MVP. Leadoff hitter with eight RBIs in three games. That's pretty impressive. Although uh, in, in one game, Freeman's trying to make up that ground, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, Freeman's got seven walks in three games. His OBP is like 600. Um, yeah, I mean, if these early stats can be very fun. Yeah. But yeah, Otani uh, just keeps... Oh, by the way, Otani also two base running blunders in, uh, in three games. What so happened? He, I didn't... Well, he in in uh, Korea. Remember, he rounded second base and then just cut right back. Yes. And then today, he just was he doubled, but ran around second with his head down, thinking he tripled. And Betts was held at third, so he just he got caught in a rundown in between. Oof. Costing Freeman an RBI, I might add. Yeah. Uh, Betts going to score 175 runs. He might. I remember when he first signed there. Chris and I were speculating that 150 could be uh, could be a target last year, and then Acuna almost got 150. Yeah, Acuna like, got 149. Yes. And I swear, like, he came out of that last game after one at bat, and I was just like, I was really hoping they'd give him one more shot at it. Like, just try to, like, homer, get yourself to second base, and then see what happens. But better that he was healthy. You know, they didn't push it. But 150 runs. I, I've only seen it, I think, twice in my lifetime. Bagwell and A-Rod. Yeah. I think that's it. Yep. So it would be very exciting to see that again. And Betts is in, obviously, a really, really good spot to do it. Dave, a uh, shame Trout knows he isn't winning anything with the Angels. Yeah, what I mean, that was the first game on, the only game going. Trout hits the first home run of the of the season against a great pitcher, and then the rest of the team craps the bed and they get blown out. So that seems to be probably what the year will take. But if Trout stays healthy, at least I'll appreciate watching him. Yeah, there's a great meme going on Instagram. Like he he homered and uh, you know the team gave up ten runs and no other starting player had a hit. I did see Rendon made a nice play on defense, so he'll probably take tomorrow off. 
Yeah, it's it's worth a day off. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, what's up? Thanks, everybody, for joining. It is opening day. And as per Blavin tradition, Chris and I are going to fire off some sure to be incorrect predictions for the year. Although I, I think uh, we got a couple right last year. I know I did well in the rookies of the year, which taken the chalk. And I know you got what did you get right? Cy Young? Yeah, I got. I think I, yeah, I definitely I had Garrett Cole. And uh, I want to say I had Acuna, but I'm not 100% sure I actually actually made that official. I may have gone with Machado for MVP, but I did get Garrett Cole right. Yeah. But so I, I like him so much that he rewarded me by missing the first two months of the season. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, I believe Woodruff was your other. Yeah. Yeah. You are. You are correct. And I think you were mad at me for even for putting Woodruff out there because yeah. I, I tend to jinx people. And um, yeah. We got a question before we get started here. Josh R says, do we have any advice on how to stay organized while searching for cards on eBay, pulling up and checking values without pulling up so many tabs? Mm-hmm. And I, I, no, honestly, not really. You're going to have a lot of tabs. Sorry, You're Josh. You're going to have a lot of tabs. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tomahawk, sorry to hear you have Bednar and Steele and all the, the Royce Lewis owners out there getting that home run and then seeing that injury. Yeah. Uh, uh, Thorzen, I, I will, Thorzen Collectibles, Correa was a guy Jeff and I both really liked going into fantasy this year. Um, really undervalued because he played last year with like plantar fasciitis. His numbers weren't good and he seemed to be kind of forgotten about. So if you picked him up, uh, that's great. Nice pick Silver up. Fox, yeah, happy baseball day. Uh, William, hit us up later in the conversation. Uh, he says he's got a would you rather. So, yes, please keep – please bother us again later in the conversation. We'll get to that. Yes. Uh, Absolutely. Do um, I dump all my Garrett Mitchell stuff? Uh, that brings me to a great story about Garrett Mitchell. Go ahead, Jeff. Let's hear it. About a week ago, Chris sent me a, a Garrett Mitchell card, his top's black parallel rookie. And it was a pretty decent deal. And I thought, well, I don't need a Garrett Mitchell rookie, so I'm not going to buy it. Well, a day later, I got an offer, and it went from like 50 down to 38 or something. Well, then it got dropped again. Uh, God is great. Yes, please hit that like. We, we appreciate that. Uh, so I, I got another offer, and it was $27. I'm like, I do not need this card, but it looks really great. It's a black parallel. I threw him a $20 offer, accepted. So it's on the way. The next nice. day, it's announced that he will be out for several months. Well, you know, we, we we collect guys we like, not necessarily always guys we think will go up in value. And you do want Garrett Mitchell to do well. So, But you want guys that play. That's the worst part. Uh, yes. O'Neal Cruz, big home run. Yes, yes. He's uh, Oppo, keep, too. Great swing. Keeping up his hot spring. Uh, Shelly says, Chris, don't pick Acuna this year, please. I, I, I didn't. And I actually, so I, well, I'm in a couple keeper leagues and I, I, I unloaded Guerrero just because I have him in both. And I felt like that was holding him back. I had to just shed him in one league to give him a chance yeah. to be good. Yeah. And sure enough, opening day, 450 feet to straightaway center. So far, so good. Uh, Thorson says it's a, it's a cramp for Royce. Oh, okay. So maybe I just a month then. And Professor, you also picked up a gold chrome auto the day before his injury. All right. Well, we're we're, we're all double jinxing him. Okay. So, Chris, let's yeah. get to some team picks out of the way. The Major League Baseball is becoming more like the NFL and the NBA every year. I think 12 teams make the playoffs. Is that right? A Am lot of teams correct? make the playoffs, Jeff. That's that's very right. There's a lot, uh, a lot of teams. But let's run through our division winners. See who we've got pulling out these divisions. It seems like in the American league, there's a, a big chunk of teams that you can figure will probably be between like 85 and 95 wins. The national league, it's a pretty wide spread of the teams that'll be at the bottom and teams that'll be at the top. But what do you like in the American league? Okay. So my American league, uh, division winners, I, the, I'm taking the Orioles in the East. That one seems like a no brainer to me. Um, I'm going Astros in the West, despite what was a pretty clunky showing today. And, I've never seen Framber Valdez walk that many guys before, but it's opening day. These things happen. Then in the central, the central to me feels like it's very open. But when you see my other picks for players, you'll understand this. I'm going with the Kansas City Royals to uh, to squeak out an, a not impressive win total, but I think they're gonna they're gonna win the central. 
All right. Well, there's there's a lot of fun young teams. The Royals, the Tigers. Maybe there's some a resurrection there. The Indians have some fun young players. I'm the same in the American League. I got Baltimore and Houston, uh, but I'm going with Minnesota in the Central. Although after today, I don't know. As as we're talking about, they do seem a little snake bit, but that's not a strong division. So I feel like even if they're talented but injury prone team can get some games in, their pitching staff is decent. I uh, I like Minnesota coming out of there. All right, yeah, yeah. I, I really did like the Minnesota the uh, the Milwaukee signing of Hoskins, which was just referenced in the chat. I thought that was yes. Great it's it's been a while since we've had a, a steady first baseman. Usually, it's been kind of a platoon, or we we look for somebody with a uh, a beer league softball build just to throw over there. <laughs> uh, Pablo Lopez, Cy Young, possible. Yeah, you uh, look great right. today. Who else do you have uh, making the playoffs in the American League? All right, so I, it's it's six teams. Is that right? Six yes, teams. Yes, I think three wild cards. Okay, so I have. Um, I I, I'm going with my heart a little bit. I, I really I wanted to see this team get past that first round of the playoffs. So I'm saying Blue Jays. The Blue Jays are getting back in, and I, I think they will actually, well, hopefully, get out of the division series. And then I, I ran into this like cluster of teams that I yeah. feel like are are good, but they all have at least one like kind of glaring flaw. So I have those four, but then for the other two spots, I'm looking at the Rangers, the Mariners, and the Yankees. And I, I just keep going back and forth and going back and forth. I, I really think the putting Judge in center field is so asinine. I think it's going to end up crippling their season. So I'm going to say my six teams are the Astros, Orioles, Royals, the Blue Jays, the uh, Rangers, and the Mariners. Uh, yes. Well, I, I think we were kind of on the same wavelength. I've got the Blue Jays as well and the Rangers. And I was going back and forth between those two and I went with the Yankees. Okay. But for each, each league, I picked a team that I I'm going to cheer for that I would like to make some noise. And that's the Mariners. I feel like, yeah, they're fun to root for. They've got a lot of players. I like I like to watch, so I'm going to be rooting for the Mariners. I don't know if they'll quite have enough to do it this year, but I would love to see them sneak in somehow. Yeah, their pitching staff is is very deep and extremely good. I just yeah. the bats are always going to be is is there enough hitting? They shed a bunch of guys. They did dump some salary, but I mean it puts them in a position to maybe add someone if they need. Like yeah. say for example, if the Brewers want to sell Reese Hoskins in July, which they might. Yeah, I saw a note about Hoskins' defense. Yeah. <laughs> Not expecting a lot there, but their their first base defense hasn't been a strong suit. Um, the battery, uh, I I enjoy the prediction. I, it might be a little aggressive. Um, Ray's going on but, the field. Uh, but I like it. I do like it. Uh, Chris Chris made a mention of going with his heart with the Blue Jays. We both went with our hearts last year and picked, uh, if you remember, picked the Angels <laughs> to make the playoffs. And for a while, it looked promising. Yeah, for a little while. Yeah, I had him as my the sixth seed. I thought there yeah. was a chance we get some lightning in a bottle, in a little magic. Yeah. We got no magic. Yeah, that went that went uh, off the rails. Uh, Dave, oh yeah, we're gonna get to Cy Young, which is is a crapshoot for sure. I, so I do think it means more than than Davo thinks. I, I I mean, if Blake Snell does win three, I, I do think as as innings pitch go down for these starting pitchers, I think peak is gonna be more important, and it's gonna be hard. Like. If Snell pitches for 12 years and wins three Cy Young Awards, I think he'll – who what the Hall will look like 17 years from now or, you know, whatever, 10, 15 years from now. He could be. Yeah, it. and mean, it, we don't know. I mean, it, it depends. If he wins the third and then is absolutely terrible, it might be hard. But if he wins the third yeah. and is even decent for another four or five years, he's probably going to get in. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, what do you got? Who do you got advancing? So let's just say the the ALCS. By ALCS, I have Astros Orioles. Okay. With, uh, with got, the Orioles, uh, Astros the Orioles. Yankees. Okay. So you're expecting Yankees. Derek Cole to come back fired up, fully healthy, and ready to rock and roll in the second half? Yeah, I think he's going to put a put on a great great few months when he gets back. And I I don't know if that if that Soto Judge combo can stay healthy i really like that uh um, real quick let me just answer uh have i met jeff wilson yes i have not heard the jeff wilson song i'm really i don't know not necessarily going to search that one out either i have met mean, him Seems you like mean like he sing. sings he sings he's he's also a an artist 
a rap I'm artist. It's I would not auto-tuned. If I, I would not expect Jeff Wilson to be a, a rap artist, but yeah, stranger things have happened. Star Huddle seventy seven makes an int- uh, says basically what I think a lot of us feel. The Rangers' offense is stacked one through nine or even one through eight. They're loaded, but their pitching is highly questionable. Which if if Montgomery was willing to take that one year deal, why the hell didn't Texas bring him back for twenty five million dollars? Yeah, why did they let Arizona do it? I mean, they can afford that. Well, and it's uh, they've got they've got Scherzer and Degrom, right? Yes. Yeah. Still. So, I mean, do you get two months out of them and they make a little run? Might it's be possible. Good to see. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to rush them back. Like you want, if you want, if Degrom can pitch this year, you want him like September first. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you know see. he's not going to throw more than sixty innings, but if you could get those sixty innings when they count. Okay. Oh, somebody made a rap about him. SFO Sox, another podcast. That's right. I think um, SCR, I think Sports Card Radio has an intro song where I've heard the name Jeff Wilson. So I'm yeah. guessing they're not fans of him. So yeah, a diss track sounds sounds like it's on, on target. Yeah. It is what it is. Uh, Seattle um, barely misses the playoffs. Probably, Shelly. Probably. Yeah, their pitching is just so good. If the bullpen can lock down a lot of these 2-1, 3-2 games, I mean, it, it's going to be a grind. And how much, you know, what kind of a step up do they get from Julio Rodriguez? I know a lot of people are thinking he's going to ascend into the stratosphere this year. And I, I like his chances. Yeah. If he puts a full season together like he did the last four months of last season. He's going to need a lot of help from Mitch Garver hitting behind him, though. And J.P. Yeah. Crawford's got to got to get better, too. There's a lot of players. that It's a lot of big ifs. But the pitching staff seems like one of the most solid staffs in the American League. So, But they do seem yeah. like a team that that could make some moves if they're if they're a bat or two away at the end of july they might make a play for somebody yes they have they definitely have money they have some money to spend their payroll's oh, not out of control. ryan if texas is banking their season on scherzer and degrom to stay healthy and pitch well we know they're not going to stay healthy no. everybody knows not that. Healthy. it's a matter of will they even get healthy and if they do get healthy yes. how long will they be healthy for so um yeah i i don't know i mean i don't think they're banking on it but it could be it it could be like two big trade deadline pickups that they get. Yeah. yeah very possible. Um, uh, uh, Silver right, Fox National League. Okay. I was going to say Silver Fox the same. We got two 40, 40 guys this year in Acuna and J-Rod. Oh, there I might like that be more than two, but I, those two guys, they've both done commercials for tops. I'm excited to see them do a commercial for tops together. I think that'd be really great. Yes. Maybe for Chrome. Get we'll some du- dual autos, maybe a dual 40, 40 auto in 2025. Mm-hmm. Man, that would be that would be fantastic, right? Uh, before we get to the NL, Thorson says, I don't know if you guys saw, but PSA graded a gem min 10 of Bench's rookie. Only the 17th copy to get a 10 out of 12,000 total graded. Which, I did not see that. It's amazing. I did not see that. It's amazing. I just, I don't know if it's because of all that we've seen in the last few weeks or the last few years, but I'm skeptical of any card that old getting a where's 10. It, even- where's it been? Like just sitting in a box and sits. I right. have ah, a hard time. Just cold. Um, yeah. Uh, Thorson, is it on their Instagram? I'll, I'll check it out. Uh, SFO Sox fan, if that's the second year uh, with a gold cup on it, I love that card. I think I know Jeff has the Bobby Witt. Uh, I do. Same card. It's a really. I like that Julio image too. Yeah, so, yeah I. I don't know. That's. I mean, congrats to the the guy that got it. I just don't know. I mean, we talk. Uh, Card doctoring has been in the news a lot lately, but vintage cards have been doctored for a long time. Oh, yeah. Jeff Wilson submitted the bench. Is that true, Har? Wow. Oh, I don't know. He knows people. I mean, I'm sure that's going to endear him to the community even further. All right. Well, I will say, like, it's on their just graded feed, Chris. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, I will check it out. If if it was Jeff Wilson's card, I mean, the PSA knows that that card is going to be scrutinized to hell and back. Oh, it's not. It's not. All right. He was just. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Yeah, all right. That makes more sense. All right. Good one, Har. Dude, RF, Yandy Diaz 100% gets no respect. I, I I told Jeff after one of our fantasy drafts. I was he doesn't even get respect in Chris's Q. Chris's Q yeah. doesn't even respect him in the draft. Yeah. I had him queued up to take, and I was talking to a buddy, like we were Zooming at the same time we were drafting. And I, it was my turn. It was my pick. And like, I got distracted. I ended up just taking the pitcher at the top, forgetting that I had Yandy Diaz right, like he was second, and I didn't get the dude right after me took him, and I was just ripping my hair out. Yeah. And now my now my corner infielder is a uh, Encarnacion Strand, which does not feel great in a ten team league. It does not feel great. All right, National League. What do you got, yeah. Chris? I I can't imagine who you've got coming out of the East. 
Okay, my division winners are the Dodgers in the West, the Braves in the East. No surprises there. Um, I'm not going to say cakewalks, but, I mean, if everyone's healthy, those two teams should cruise past 100 wins. The Dodgers could make a run at the Mariners even. We'll see. Central's interesting. I don't see a runaway team. Total crapshoot. So, if the, the Reds losing McLean for what looks like the whole season, um, again, that, that one's on me. I kept him. I made it happen. That hurts them a lot. So they were going to be my pick, but now they're not. I'm going with the Cubs to squeak out of the uh, NL Central. I know Jeff, you won't like that. No, but, I don't uh, like that. I think that. Suzuki takes a big step forward. Yeah, I, I. Yeah, I'm still still salty about Council going, turning turning trader and going to the Cubs. Uh, yeah, the the Central's wide open. I'm I'm with you with the Braves and Dodgers. The Central's just a complete crapshoot. I. I wouldn't be surprised if any team won it, even the Pirates. Um, yeah, I like the Pirates a lot. But, I, uh, I, but I'm going to go uh, – this one, I'm just going to go with the Brewers. They got a really young team, lost their best two pitchers. Their de facto ace is a guy who hasn't been able to put a consistent season together. But I love Freddie Peralta. They still have a deep bullpen. Sure. They made a move to get a couple bats. Uh, they'll be fine even without Garrett Mitchell for a few months. So I'm going to go with, with the Brewers again, like the AL central, I don't expect a high win total. No, no, it might be an 80, an 82, 80 kind of season uh, yeah. gets it out. Uh, John Fusco pointed out that uh, Steele pulled his hammy covering first base, which is one of the, ba- that's, I remember I told you like I wanted Spencer Strider to give up runs so he could get some practice moving around the infield and like backing stuff up and yeah. that kind of stuff. God, that stinks. I, I hope Steele's not out for too long. I'm pretty sure John Fusco drafted him in our league, Jeff. And he's, he tends to have one of those uh, anti-Midas touches as well. Well, he's he's got a close eye on it then. Yeah, let us yeah. know. Yeah, we'll um, keep us updated. Ooh, sounds like Adolis Garcia hit a bomb. Sounds like it, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll get to Jer- Jacob DeGrom. We've covered him a lot right now. I say he's not a Hall of Famer if he's done, but I think he can be a Hall of Famer. Yeah, I, I agree that he has a path, but it's a yeah. it's a very narrow one. That he's All right, who else you got making the uh, making the playoffs in the NL? Okay, so we have Braves, Dodgers, Cubs. Now for the wild cards, the Phillies. Obviously, they're going to be the first wild card, and they're going to be a nightmare for whoever has to deal with them in the playoffs, as yep. gotten pretty used to the last couple of years. Then I think the other two teams are coming out of the West. Um, the Rockies are just going to get the absolute shit kicked out of them all season. Yeah. Um, the, the the teams that make the playoffs in the West might just be the teams that that don't lose to the Rockies. Yeah. If you can go 12 and 0 or whatever it is, 11 and 1 against the Rockies, it's that's going to be the thing that gets you in the playoffs. So I like the Padres. Honestly, I think that everything went wrong last year. Everything that went wrong went wrong. They lost Soto. They don't have Snell and they lost Hader. So now it's all going to come together and they're going to sneak into the playoffs. And I, I'm going to put the Diamondbacks in there too. You can't tell me a team that made the World Series last year won't, won't make the playoffs. Especially with Montgomery now and now on their staff, so that, love that's it. Yeah, I uh, I had trouble with this one too. Obviously, I went with Phillies for my four, but the the other one is a crapshoot, and I had the exact same thought. So I went with Padres because everybody expected it last year. It didn't happen. They lost a couple big players, of course, but Tatis I think is going to put it together, and you got Machado there. So uh, I'm going with the Padres, and then for my last one. I was looking at the Diamondbacks, especially the way they they manhandled the Brewers and most of the rest of the NL on their way to their uh, their playoff run. But I'm going to go on a limb and say that the Cardinals are going to find a way to sneak in. Just because they always seem to find a way to do something after crappy years. So all right, they got a revolving door in their outfield. Their pitching staff sucks. But... <laughs> I think, they're, but like the like the uh, American League, my team that I'm excited to watch and hope makes a run is the Reds because they got a lot of fun young young players. So yes, and Frankie Montas, for what it's worth, looked incredible today. I'm some some guy I'm playing in fantasy started Frankie Montas, and I'm like, well, wow, I should get me some ratio wins. And of course, like six scoreless innings. Yeah, that's kind of annoying. But um, but yeah, I again, if McLean were healthy, I. I would think of them even higher, but I, I do like the Reds as well. And I want to see, um, I want to see, uh, uh, my brain just doesn't work sometimes. Well, I know all that is. I want Hunter Brown. I want to see Hunter Brown. Hunter yeah. Green, sorry. Hunter I, want Green. To, I want to see Hunter Green just figure it out. Man, he could. He could be a 220 strikeout guy. 
he gets enough innings. Yeah, there's another Spencer Strider lurking inside inside yep. Hunter Green. Yep, and he's had the surgery. He's done. He's back, mm -hmm. full strength. Uh, all right. So, uh, yeah, we get some notes in the comments. SFO, yeah, wants the Giants, and I could see the Giants. I mean, any of those teams yeah. out west, if they're the ones that that beat up on the Rockies, they could get in there. Yeah, Cardinals the, the Giants pitching is, is amazing. The Giants pitching is great. Yeah, but they're kind of like the Mariners. Like, how are they going to score runs consistently? Got to score runs. Yep. Uh, so we're getting some chat in there. Langford, Carter, Young. Uh, I think Filmington stopped in. What's up, Phil? Talking about Wyatt Langford looking the part. I'm guessing he got a hit. His first. Yeah, I think he got a hustle base hit today. That's what I saw. Right. Um, I, I see SFO Sox fan with a nice name drop here. Don't sleep on Nick Ladolo. Nick Ladolo burned me hard last year in fantasy. So I, I wasn't sleeping on him. He, I would plan to take him in the last round of all my drafts or buy him for a buck at auction. I didn't get him anywhere. Yeah. And one of my leagues, he went like 150th, which seemed insane. Like at that point, you're banking on real value. And he went in Jeff's, um, Jeff has an auction league, a keeper auction league. And I was down, I couldn't afford $2 for anybody. And someone, I think I put Lodolo up for a buck and someone bid the $2. And I wow. may as well have been $1,000. I couldn't afford him. Yeah. But I like him. He's nasty. But last year, his entire body fell apart. Like his shin shattered. He had like an elbow problem. So who knows? Yeah. But that, like I said, that Reds team is fun. They're losing yes. players to injury, but they still have a lot of young players. Your corner infielder is going to be a, a pillar of your fantasy team, and I think he's going to lead the Reds uh, to be to be exciting, if not to the playoffs. So who do you got advancing? What's your NLCS? My NLCS, it, it, it's, it, it's been two years without this, and this is what I think right. Major League Baseball deserves. It's the Braves-Dodgers. Like We have to see it. We have to see these two stacked rosters battle it out, yep. and it, it, would, it would be must-see TV. Yeah, so many MVPs on the field, so much talent out there. Like we, I, we want to see it at least once. The Braves have not been in October with a healthy pitching staff for two years. The Dodgers went to October last year with almost no pitching staff. They had Clayton Kershaw on fumes, Bobby Miller, and like no one over twenty three. So let's see, it. let's see it this year. I, you know, we all want to see, uh, uh, we, <laughs> we want to see Otani get as far as possible. Although I do hope the NLCS is as far as he gets. Um. All right. So. Uh, Thorson, thanks for sending it. I will pull that up so we can all take a look at it. But uh, who do you got winning the NLCS? I think that's a that's a ridiculous question. Of course, I have the Braves sweeping the Dodgers, sweeping uh, four consecutive uh, fifteen nothing shutouts. Right out of there. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I I I yeah, I think we're gonna see Braves Orioles. Orioles, okay. Braves Orioles is your World Series. Yeah, I, I yeah I didn't say Orioles last time, but yes, yeah, Braves Orioles in my World Series, yeah. Uh, love it. Um, so I've got the Dodgers over the Braves. Sorry to say, but I think I'm just gonna. I'm walking out of the stream right now, Jeff. We're gonna finally get it done. Well, we know knowing my predictions last year, this is true, meaningless. Um, and then I've got the Dodgers over Houston in the World Series. Okay. Yeah. I think they, I mean, they I, all that money spent. I think is gonna pay off for them this year. It would be fun to see Jordan and Otani kind of going head to head. Yeah. Just two massive sluggers uh, back and forth. I saw someone in here mention uh, Tristan McKenzie, and I, I really felt like in fantasy he was being completely forgotten. He was absolutely incredible in 2022. Again, everything that could go wrong went wrong last year. I believe John Fusco had him on his team, which probably aided his uh, complete disintegration. But he looked great in, uh, in spring training. So I picked him up on a bunch of leagues, which is unfortunately not a great sign for him. Maybe, maybe he can buck the trend. Yeah. Uh, Shelly, it's, it's not what I want. I don't want the Dodgers to to win the World Series. It's just a a guess. I'm trying to use my powers of guessing. Uh, John Fusco, Braves O's, good call. O's winning the World Series will be good for baseball, right, Chris? It would. I, I can't argue that it would be great for baseball. Especially, I don't know if you guys saw. There's a video out of the new Orioles owners uh, going into a bar in like downtown Baltimore and buying like rounds of beer for everyone. The exact kind of stuff that that we all want to see. Like that Angelo's ownership family was awful. These new people seem amazing. And that's, that's just great. Like get in there, interact with the fans. It, that, I think I feel like that just endeared them to the entire city pretty quick. You can find that video. It's, it's out there. It's on Instagram. It's around, but really cool stuff. Like if I owned a team, if, if we won like mega millions, Jeff, and we could buy a team, I mean, I feel like we could almost afford the A's now, but if we, oh. if we could buy a team. Like that's the kind of shit I'd want to do. Yes, for sure. Uh, Bob says twins, Orioles, and ALCS. That would be very surprising and fun to see. Yeah. Um, 
uh, Thorson, where did you where did you send the? Chris, check your check your uh, Instagram. All right, hold on. I just saw Thick Boy says, "Imagine John Henry doing that." I could imagine John Henry going to the bar, ordering the round, but then leaving someone else to pay the tab. Yes. Oh, I didn't know I had to pay. Just because I ordered, I didn't know I'd have to pay for it. Yeah. Uh, uh, Royce Lewis today. Yeah, Dave's Braves card. We were talking about Royce Lewis. Chris kind of mentioned it's it's the agony and the ecstasy of the twins over the last few years. They just have such huge talent between Lewis and Buxton. They just can't play half a season, much less a full season. So, Okay, yeah. You, uh, Thorsten, I got it in my Instagram. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so should we – let's do some awards, Jeff. Yeah, let's do some awards. All right. Uh, all right. So <laughs> John Fusco says he's not sure John Henry knows how to order a beer. And honestly, I'm not sure he does. I he might just be surprised. snapping his fingers in the corner and hoping it one appears. Yeah. All right. This is, uh, this is a little crazy. I'm picking two of the same winners that I picked last year for awards, except they've both moved to different leagues. Oh, okay. So, uh, for my AL MVP, I'm going to go with Juan Soto, who I picked for the NL MVP last year. Okay. And the Cy Young, I'm going with uh, my dear departed friend, Corbin Burns, who I also picked last year for the Brewers. And I believe he might win the Cy Young this year. All right, Jeff, I'm going to interrupt you. JG Wynn, if you're sending people videos of your 25-year-old tortoise and it isn't Jeff and I, I have no, I, I, I just have to be personally offended at this point. My wife and I have literally talked about your turtle, and that really sounds like a sex thing, and it's not. We've talked about your turtle for like two weeks. I would love to see it. Please, please send Jeff and I like. We've been checking our course. Instagram please. religiously to find pictures of the turtle. Last Thursday Did night, I'm eating chicken chunks, and I'm just like refreshing my messages to see a turtle video show up, and I got nothing. Oh, but, Shelly didn't get it either. I, I don't know, JG Win. Are you even sending these? This seems uh, this seems a little sketchy. Come on, buddy. I, I will pound most of this uh, this uh, this bourbon bottle I got right here if you can get me a turtle photo or a turtle video. Please repost the turtle video if it comes. Yes, if we yes, get so. it, we'll share it in here. Yes. Oh, course. absolutely. Yeah, for uh, sure. Corbin looked great today. Yes, yeah. he uh, Trout hit that home run, but I believe he had 11 Ks in six innings. And uh, yeah, so he, he he's my pick. So I just wanted to put those two picks together because they're the same as last year. They're just a new league. So wh what do you got for those? I would say that's a perfect outing, I think, for anyone that we see facing the Angels. That's what we want to see. Six yeah. good innings, but a home run for Mike Trout. Perfect. I think everyone's happy. Yeah. Um, okay, so you did MVP and Cy Young? Is that what I heard? I did, just because I wanted to uh, link my story together. I went fast. All right, my AL MVP, I'm going with the, with the big man, Jordan Alvarez. Love it. I think they moved him up to the second spot. He's going to get more bats. I, I, I understand the stupidity, and I say this to other people all the time. Past performance is the best indication of future performance. If he hasn't played 150 games yet, why do you think he's going to do it now? He's still young, and I think they're going to treat him properly as opposed to what the Yankees are doing with Judge. So I'm expecting huge numbers out of Jordan this year, and I think he's going to put that offense on his back and officially make it his team. For my Cy Young, um, I'm going Luis Castillo with the Mariners. I, I picked the Mariners to make the playoffs. And that dude was, he was nasty last year. He faded a little bit down the stretch. I think he can avoid that this year. So those awesome. are my two uh, award winners in the AL. But, Jeff, we also talked about dark horses. We did. So I did pick a couple of guys in those categories that aren't at the top of anyone's list. So do you want to hear mine or do you want to give me yours? Uh, I'll, I'll, give my, uh, I'll give my dark horse Cy Young candidate. Okay, go ahead. I, and he came up earlier in the chat. People were talking about him. And our good friend from Spitball and Cards, Teapot, is laying his life on the line for him. And it's Tarek Skubal from uh, the Tigers. No one's going to want to hear that more than John Fusco if he's still in the chat. He's been hoarding him in our in our 10-team league for the last, like, three years, waiting for this season. And I think he's going to get it. Yeah. I was yes. hoping he'd draw, he wouldn't keep him because sometimes he does really dumb stuff. But, you know, as it turns out. So my, my I had two dark horses for Cy Young. I actually had written down Scooble as well. But I, I do think Reagans is going to make, it, going to make himself a factor this year. I, I think his ERA is going to be a little bit too high to win it. But he's going to rack up some Ks. And put up a really good season for Kansas City. And speaking of Kansas City, my dark horse MVP is Bobby Witt. I do think that team is going to make noise. And he's comfortable. He's locked in. He's there. He signed that deal. I think he's going to get votes. He's going to put up a real nasty season. He might not get the 40-40, but 30-50 that he just missed last year is right there for him as a shortstop. 
And if they do, they do sneak in, they win that division. He's going to get a lot of votes. Plays a premium position. Yep. Yep. But my darkest dark horse is, of course, if any Red Sox fans are here, that offense is going to be, that offense will make noise. And no one's going to be louder than Rafael Devers this year. He is just shitting on baseballs all spring training. Yep. That's he, my dark horse. Yeah, he worked on uh, he worked on going oppo. I think he's tired of hitting 380-foot uh, outs in the right center and watching Aaron Judge hit 317-foot home runs to the right field. He worked on going to left. I, I think we're going to see something magical in Boston between him and Casas and 80 good games out of uh, Trevor Story. Uh, yes, that's, I mean, uh, so Devers was my pick. I looked and he's number 10 on the odds on favorites. So that seemed pretty low for, uh, for what I think we could get from him, and probably because the team looks so terrible. Yeah. Uh, okay. So those are our dark horses and our favorites. I see, uh, Shelly's throwing McKenzie in. I, I see a lot of people are saying Pablo Lopez. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for the twins, I can see that. I'm sorry Kevin Bollywood Boston. isn't dark horse enough, but I feel like everyone's saying Soto and Judge, Soto and Judge, Soto and Judge. So I don't think either one of those guys is going to win it. Soto's going to have a great year, but I tell, I keep hearing how stacked this Yankee offense is, but show me hitters five through nine that are stacked. I don't see it. I just yeah. don't see it. I, I... Well, uh, yeah, and sh- okay, uh, SFO Sox fan, we, I was just saying like out of the top five favorites. So we're not talking like, Reese Hoskins pick. I see Shelly's yeah. throwing on some real dark horse. Uh, Mikhail Garcia from the from the Royals and oh, Michael yeah. Harris. So those are real dark horse. I, I appreciate those. I love me some Michael Harris, but that's... Whew, uh, and JG Wynn sent the video to the wrong Instagram account. It's on its way now. So keep your fingers crossed. It should All be right. there. Okay, Adley for MVP. DJ Local says, um, yeah. what about Rookie of the Year? Uh, for Rookies of the Year. Okay, for American League... Everyone's saying the two Rangers guys. Yeah, that's where I'd go. All right, I'm, I'm going for a Tiger. I, I do think the Tiger is going to make a lot of noise. Um, I, I like that team. If they had not signed Baez, man, they, they could really they could have yeah. they could have really cleaned up in the offseason this year, uh, especially late. They could have put a really nice team on the field, but they're they're getting there. Torkelson's right. They finally it. get Cabrera's contract off the books. Yes. Yeah. Torkelson took a step forward second half of last year. That should continue. Riley Green's healthy, but. My AL Rookie of the Year is Mr. Colt Keith, who has just a really cool name. I've heard he you talking been, about him. He has just smashed through the minor leagues last year. and They handed him the second base job and $30 million. I like him a lot. Yeah, and Riley Green's a, a nice player yeah. there too, I suppose, Sox fan. Yeah. Uh, great. Yeah, I'm going I'm going with Evan Carter. Tor could hit 45 home runs, sure. Dude, I Torkelson was another like kind of sleeper. Sleep is the wrong word, but like a guy I wanted like later in fantasy drafts, and he just got scooped up like way early. Yeah. I, I feel like when you take a sleeper in him. the top hundred, it's not a sleeper anymore. But anyway, Jeff, as you were, you were saying Evan Evan Carter's your guy? Um, yes, I'm going with uh with Evan Carter. I feel like what we saw in the in the playoffs last year was indicative of what he's what he brings to the table. And I think that's it helps to have his name out there already. So uh, Shelly says Wyatt Langford. Yeah, I could see that too. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. I mean, I feel like, yeah, Wyatt Langford is probably like the popular pick. Yeah. But we've seen a lot of guys kill the ball in spring training and, and make that opening day team and end up right back in AAA. Not saying he's going to be that guy. I just, I, you never know. You just never know with baseball. You never know with baseball. All right. Nationally, um, rookie of the year, Jeff, who you got? Uh, well, this this is a uh, might be a little bit of a, a homer pick, but I'm going with Jackson Cheerio because I feel like the commitment that the Brewers made to him is great. He did not look overmatched at all for a 20 year old in spring training. He's going to get all the chances in the world with this team. And uh, yeah, I'd like to see what he can do with it. All right. OK. All right. Mine to me, I this is of all the picks. Um, And actually. Did we just skip? I think we skipped all the National League stuff. <laughs> I'm looking at what I wrote down. We haven't talked about it yet. You just went right to the uh, Rookie of the Year. I, for right to, I saw something in the chat, and I got distracted. Um, I I would bet on this. I'm not a, I'm not a gambler outside of cards and uh, drinking, but um, I feel very confident in this win, which means it can't happen. But San Francisco Giants left-handed pitcher Kyle Harrison, he's your NL Rookie of the Year. Filthy, okay. filthy stuff. 
And another guy that I wanted late in every fantasy draft I had, and I think I only got him once because someone else wanted him more. But I like him a lot. He's going to be the number two starter behind Logan Webb, who is absolutely disgusting, by the way. If you saw some highlights of Logan Webb today, uh, check those out if you get a chance. Like that guy, he's nasty. But take he's a look. Nasty. Kyle Harrison will pitch their second game. Uh, try to try to catch some highlights if you can. Lefty throws hard. And then that ballpark in San Francisco, it, it's never hot. The ball just never travels unless Bonds hits it or Max Muncy. But, so you uh, think that'll keep his his numbers and ratios down? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I like him a lot. So All let's right. So, way up. Yeah. What do you got? What do you got for uh, for MVP? I mean, I'm not, I, I won't say it because I, I, I was asked not to. But I do think that Betts' willingness and ability to cover shortstop, for whatever asinine reason the Dodgers have created, why they won't get a shortstop is so beyond me, Jeff. $300 million for this team, and they won't get a shortstop. I don't, I don't understand it. I feel like uh, their general manager, I don't know, maybe he was like sexually assaulted by a shortstop in high school or something, but he seems to hate the position. He won't, he won't fill it. So Betts is willing to give it a shot. I, I'm going to go with Mookie Betts as my NL MVP. The simple fact that they have now bounced him from three positions and wait, just this is mind boggling. Like, okay, the judge and center field thing makes my head hurt because they actually have a gold glove caliber center fielder on their roster, yep. and they just won't put him out there for whatever reason. They must think that uh, Verdugo's offense is so valuable that they couldn't possibly keep him on the bench. Doesn't make any sense. So be it. But the Dodgers just won't roster a shortstop. I can't wrap my head around this. He looks good there, though. He really doesn't, though. Like, this isn't Tuesday night softball where you can just put someone there. He never played before. I don't get it. I don't get it, but his willingness to do it, his ability to sort of uh, do it a tightrope it for a little while is great. I mean, his value is just incredible. So I, I do think he's due a second MVP. I think that flexibility, he's going to get bounced around. I think at some point they'll trade for Adamas. Sorry. And then they'll move him back to second base. And the fact that they, again, we need to really think about the fact that they they moved him out of right field for offense. To get more, that's the one thing the Dodgers don't need is more offense. So I, I do think eventually they're gonna they'll at least slide him over to second and get him yeah. off shortstop. They need just someone there who can field. It doesn't matter if they hit. They just need someone who can field. He's not that bad. He's he's he's. I don't know. I'd say above replacement level at shortstop. So I I don't think we have enough data. Yeah, but it just seems impossible. It does seem impossible, but man, if anybody could do it, he could do it. He so he's my pick too. He's my pick. Um, yeah. Uh, for for dark horse for MVP, I'm gonna go with uh, Manny Machado, another guy just out of the top ten for odds. And he, as we talked about, the Padres are really his team. Uh oh, am I seeing yours too? Dark horse. <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah. I mean, we, I will share say, a baseball brain, I'd have to say. Yeah, he uh, he didn't look great today when he tried to break his bat over his leg and the bat didn't break. That's not a, that's not a great look, but. He's going to um, have a nice bruise there. Yeah, and that's maybe that's a little a little motivating for him. But yeah, I, I, like I said, I, I people have talked about Tatis having a huge year, and I, mean, I, I think he will too, but I just don't think voters are going to pay any attention to him. I, I like Machado to win. He's, eventually he'll be back in the field sometime in like May, I think. I like him a lot. So yeah, as a dark horse, I think he's way out of the time. I think he's somewhere around like ninth or eleventh or something. Yeah, he's he's pretty low, and he's got what four top five MVP finishes. Oh yeah, a couple a couple of seconds too. Very MVP. close seconds. Yeah. Uh, Jamie says the Dodgers had to spend the rest of the budget on a new interpreter, which is maybe why they can't afford a shortstop. Right, right. Uh, SFO Sox fan is Frank Robinson the only guy to win an MVP in both leagues? It sounds right. But I'm not. It, I'm not it definitely was. So if nobody's done it recently, I believe it still is. I gotta think about that one. But yeah, that, that does sound right, actually. Yeah, we've got the Cy Youngs in multiple. Yes. Yeah. Multiple definitely games. that. Um, uh, David, yes, great start for Soto with the Yankees. And if you missed it earlier, he is my pick for MVP. I'm sticking with it. Uh, all right, what do you got for 
for Cy Young, I don't know if I should even bother asking who you've got I mean, for Cy Young. It seems like the biggest runaway for uh, for awards winners, but it does. It seems like Strider's the hot pick. Um, Wheeler's probably like right behind him. If you had to pick one, it's got one of those two are, are the front runner. Strider's probably the front runner. So yes, I will say Strider is I think the most likely. Yeah. It, it bums me out. I don't know if John Fusco is still here. The number of people that I've predicted to have huge seasons that are on his fantasy team is bothering me. But it is what it is. We can't change it. Strider looked just unbelievably disgusting in spring training. I think that I, I talk about it a lot, but the leg muscles do help take the strain off the arm. And I, I think that's going to get him through the season. So, yeah, Strider is definitely my Cy Young pick. Uh, John says, keep talking. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Evan Carter just missed a home run for the lead. Uh, Glasnow could do it. Yeah, I, I definitely considered him. I just don't know if he's going to have the innings innings to do it, Thorson, but but great yeah. pick. Um, there was something else. Ooh, Bobby Miller, I like that. My dark horse is going to be Yuri Perez, but uh, fun fantasy fact. Um, so in, in this league, I'm in with Jeff and uh, John Fusco in the chat here. Uh, we had to keep eight guys. My eighth keeper was Yuri Perez, but elbow pain. He's going for imaging. We're allowed to replace before the auction. I'm like, I got to replace this guy. So I did. I did not replace Matt McLean, who was like perfectly healthy at the time of our draft. And sure enough, Matt McLean's going to miss the entire season. So that's that's a bit of a kick in the groin especially since uh, Yuri Perez will be back. It seems like he's okay, right? Inflammation. I mean, yeah, he's on the on the DL, but not yeah. forever. Yeah. Professor's dugout, I think Wheeler is, he's right there. I mean, those two guys right now yeah. are, if you're doing a fantasy draft, Strider goes first, Wheeler goes like five picks later. Uh, yeah, Logan Webb right in that top five for sure with like Zach Gallen probably there too. Just picked up a Yuri Black Chrome Heritage Refractor. Nice job, Shelly. Uh, yeah, I went I went with Wheeler just to buck the trend a little bit. Um, yeah. He, he, he has the second best odds, but they're like twice as long as Strider. I think Strider's like plus 400 or plus 450 and Wheeler's at plus 800. Uh, I just feel like he's he's getting better with age. And we've seen that in some pitchers. He's not old by any means, but I feel like he's just reaching his... Yeah, he's, the, he's the war. I think in the last like three years, Jeff, he's the major league uh, war leader for pitchers. Like he, just, oh, I believe it. He just gives up. He gives a home run, so his ERA tends to be a little bit higher. But I mean, the guy just he's he's a horse, like you just said. He eats yep. innings. He takes the ball. He throws hard. And man, and in, in the postseason, he has not shied away. He does not get tight. Doesn't get scared. I hate facing him. Or I, I know I hate watching a team I like face him. Michael yeah. Soroka, really? He looked pretty good in spring training. He's one of those guys the Braves had to move. They just they had to move him. They couldn't afford to spend the money on him. It was much better to spend the money on uh, <clears throat> Mariner garbage to get Jared Kelnick. But, yeah, I, I root for him. I hope he does really well in Chicago. He's going to have a stress-free, pressure-free environment. I hope he does really well. To, to keep up my uh, homerism, I'm going to go with Freddy Peralta for my long shot. He's shown in spurts that he's got what it takes. Uh, he's just got to put the innings together and uh, show that he can be that ace. So I could see it happening. I, I don't know. If, I think I may have violated the rules for Dark Horse. Um, but my Dark Horse is Snell to repeat. I mean, he's going to the same. He's going to a, a place he's probably comfortable in. He's pitched there before. A manager that he had last year. And he's going to arguably, what, one of the three best pitcher parks in baseball? Good Give point. him a couple of weeks to to get caught up, and who knows? I'm looking. He he is. I mean, he's eighth best. So I, I'd say that that qualifies. He's out of the top five. He's an eighteen to one long shot. So yeah, Chris Sale oh, counts as a long shot. Yes, for yeah. sure. Yeah, there's some stuff in the comments. I just wanted to get to here. David S says, "If this is a great question, if Otani gets suspended, which we don't think he will, who would become the face of baseball?" That's a great question. Someone someone uh, responded and said they think it's Mookie Betts. I mean, it should be. It should be Betts or Julio Rodriguez or Acuna. I know Acuna worked really hard on his English in the offseason, and he's done some interviews in English this spring. I think he wants that. He really would like to be the face of baseball. He's a good-looking guy. So uh, that that's who I would be hoping takes that mantle. But, I mean, we'd have to, we'd have to see. It's hard to even say, as, as big as Otani is, is he really the face of baseball? Because, like, 
We don't As really talk about about them. That's one of the problems that baseball's had with their marketing. They really haven't had a face in their best player for a decade, Trout. They, he, he wasn't really out there promoting. They weren't promoting him. Yeah. Yeah. And guys like Judge, Betts, they're all, they all would be great options to get out there. But uh, I don't know. Maybe now that Fanatics is in charge on the baseball card side, they're going to be a little bit more aggressive in promoting, which we've already seen. Yep. As you reference those commercials. So maybe we will actually get more of a face of baseball. Yeah. Otani, definitely globally SFL Sox fan. You're right. And yeah. Acuna just had that big story come out. I would like to think that Acuna is right there. He could take, uh, he could take that mantle, but honestly, so could Bryce Harper. Yeah. Uh, uh, SFO says Bobby Witt potentially for sure. Yeah. And he's had the story. He's, he's one of those guys who everybody's been following since he was 12 because of his pedigree and he hasn't disappointed all the way up. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of history there. Second generation ball player. Yeah. I will also, I just want to also say these names that Jeff and I picked, um, even if they have the seasons that we think, uh, is there anyone that we picked Jeff that, um, I mean, how do I phrase this? I'd like, you don't see a path. Like say, for example, um, let's say Bobby Wood Jr. Or let's say he has a season that we were sort of contemplating. Do his cards actually go up or are they so high already that there's really nowhere for them to go? That's hard to say. And we've talked about this a little bit on, on Spitball and Cards, the other podcast that we do, just what the correlation is between performance of a player on the field and performance of the cards. and since the crazy pandemic hype of 2020, when things got all out of whack, it th those two things haven't went hand in hand. No. You look at a guy like Acuna last year who had a historically great season, and a lot of his cards were flat. Some were even down over the year. So it's hard to say with, with guys that are already pretty expensive, like, say, a guy like Witt, I don't know how much that increases. I feel like it would help the floor like I feel it has with Acuna. I feel like there's that floor built in now that it won't drop beneath. But you would need – I think you would need one of our long shots to, to come through whose prices are already low to get a big increase. Yeah, Just that's I, I would say basically exactly that. Like guys like Julio Rodriguez, who I've heard people say he's going to take a big step. Like we're already paying for that step. Yeah. If you're buying his cards, like you're assuming that step is already basically happening, you know, as you as you pay. Yeah. It's hard to look at guys like I really think we've talked about him constantly. And I feel like in this particular category of guys who should go up. But if Betts plays shortstop for two months and scores 60 runs in the first two months with I'm not going to extrapolate the RBIs. But I mean, is this the thing that gets people to look at Betts' career and be like, oh, my God, we have been staring at greatness for the last like eight or nine years and sort of ignoring it yeah what what makes that happen yeah i don't know ha. uh sfo Sox fan i uh chunks i, I uh, behave myself chunks but does I, not have a zero chunks has already been mentioned on, oh, the, yes, on the i did mention chunks thank you i did mention chunks um yeah. but i have not mentioned uh the other two but i have been comfortably sipping my cocktail uh JG Wynn sent the video. Uh, did you get it, Shelly? Make sure you send it to Baseball Card Addict as well, please, JG Wynn. Uh, I did want to, if I can remember how to share my screen. Hold on. Jeff, I'm, I didn't see the other things. I'm laughing that uh, uh, baked in once and Zygote is still at zero. We're still at the. <laughs> Not anymore. Now it's <laughs> on the list. Uh, if I can, uh, Chris, can you remind me how to share the. Share on my the bottom, screen. On the bottom, go to presence with the, the screen plus. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I'm going to share this screen. Let me see if this works. Uh, da, 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 da. While you're doing that, Silver Fox is saying Scherzer is supposed to be back by May the 4th. That would be great. May the Star 4th Wars be with day. you. A Star Wars day. Can you see my screen, Chris? I can. If you go up to view, you can zoom oh, yeah. in and make it even bigger. But yeah, oh, my God. Uh, so there is the, look at that Johnny bench PSA 10. That's just insane. Sorry. You wonder where this has been. I wish they'd right. have a little bit more backstory here. Man. That's so cool to see, uh, married with children, co-star Johnny bench here on a 1968 tops, uh, baseball card. 
And honestly, if you're Ron Tompkins, man, I, I assume you got a chin implant sometime in your in your 40s, but you have to just have copies of this card all the time. What if like I have I I'd have photocopies to always give to people to be like, yeah, I was on I'm on Johnny Bench's rookie card. All right, Shelly the Turtle received the all important tortoise, but it says message unavailable. Maybe because you're not friends. Mm, I tell you. This is a, such a tease. Okay. Uh, Chris, did you say you got the turtle? No, I did not. Maybe Ron had it graded. That's an excellent question. Maybe Ron Tompkins. Yeah, is I believe the owner? this is his copy. Man. I we used to see that card occasionally at shows, but it was always like it looked like it had been under a brick for about six years. Let me check. Uh, uh, da -da -da. Was this Instagrammed? I'm just so skeptical of a card that old in that good of condition because even out of the pack, they weren't often in that good of condition. So I'd love to know if there'd be some sort of story there about how it's so perfect. Ah, yeah, him and Jerry Kuzman. And I, I, I've told this before, but when I was in fifth grade, we had a baseball card club in my elementary school. Um, no judgments. And um, I hate to say this, but it was like kind of popular. People wanted to come in. So we, we made like an entrance. You had to answer a trivia question to get in. So this was like 1990, 1989, I think. Trivia question was, who was on Jose Canseco's Fleer rookie card with Jose Canseco? Who's the other guy? Oh, is that Eric Plunk? Eric Plunk is correct. And that's how he weeded out the people that really didn't care about cards, but just wanted to hang out with the cool kids. You know? <laughs> the cool kids. Yes, of yeah. course. Uh, professor, maybe they rub Kurt's card care on it. I don't think just a rubbing would make a vintage card like this look good. This would need a soaking and perhaps some creasing tools, uh, corner tools. Probably not recoloring because it is white, but potentially recoloring. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Thorson has his Conseco Plunk signed by both. That's oh, great. that is amazing. That is great. How did you get an Eric Plunk signature? Where is Eric Plunk? And what a great name for a pitcher, exactly. by the way. Right? Yeah, just like the Braves have a guy named Aaron Bummer. That's not a yeah. great one. But, uh, yeah. He plunked him like Jeff Walk. <laughs> thick, boy, thick Boy says you came up with that too fast, Jeff. <laughs> it was really oh, quick. It, uh, hmm, yeah. Oh, what you got to you got to play like it's not on the forefront of your brain. Right. Your wife's birthday is buried back there, but Eric Right, Plunk's but I know it's Eric Plunk shares a rookie card that I never owned by the way. It was way too priced too high for me to own at the time. It's fairly it's, affordable now, Jeff. You can get a nice set of the 86. In fact, I have an Eric Plunk card in this table that I'm sitting at right now. You do. Yeah, it's a big conversation starter. Um Plunk. <laughs> I'm a wizard. Yeah, Jeff, Jeff, uh, M. Parsons, Jeff would have qualified for the club. I, I have, I have absolutely no doubt. Based on some photos I've seen of Jeff from around that time, he would have been, uh, well, I, I would hope that mullets would be accepted. Absolutely. Oh boy. SFO Sox fan. Uh, yeah, we do like to use that term. Um, and we like to chuckle about it. So it's one of those, you know, kind of, if you know, you know, kind of soaking jokes. I love lamp. Anyway. All right, so uh, did we make it through all of our picks? I believe we did. We did. We did. Yeah. So uh, let us know in the comments once this is posted or if you're watching it not live, how crazy we are or if you think we made any good picks. Let us know what your picks are, both for your World Series picks and MVP picks, because we can always come back and then identify the geniuses in here that that knew the right answers before the season even started or just as it was getting started if stanton hits 500 home runs will he make the hall of fame yes you think so jeff i do he'd be a real interesting case would i see john fusco says no i leaned in that direction too it's just been so ugly it's been so bad for so many years it's like, been it's really just... ugly but that there's so few players that are getting 500 that's true and there's still a pretty large contingent of old school voters that haven't completely aged out of the system that don't look at war as the be all end all. And they like to see those big round numbers. So it is, it's, a, think, it's a nice round number. And his peak was brief. Um, I will always remember the home run he hit for team USA in the world baseball classic that almost brought down that warehouse in San Diego. Um, but I just, I don't know. Unless he, he has a couple surprise seasons in here, the trend that he's on is so brutal. 
that hitting like if he hits 20, you know, 22, 23 home runs a year for the next three years while batting a buck 99, is he helping the team? Is he good? No, I, 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 I would not vote for him. He's like a Dave Kingman at that point. So you're yeah. right. Uh, M. Parsons says it'll take him 10 minutes to get to the podium from his seat. Well, it depends. You know, some days he can run, some days he can't. They're not trying to keep him warm for that contract. Uh, what if Pete gets 500 Pete Alonzo? I would say yes. Yeah. You can it right now for sure. I mean, it's, it's hard to say what can happen in the next 10 years. Pete Alonzo seems like there's a place for him. I honestly, I know the Red Sox have Tristan Casas at first and they've got Devers at uh, third. If they sign Pete Alonso to be their DH and slot him right in between there, there's no ballpark player combination, I think, more made for each other than Pete Alonso and uh, Fenway Park. Yeah. That could be that could be dangerous. That'd be great. Um, Acuna over under 65 steals this year. Jeff, you go first. Under. I think under two, but not because he won't be running, but I, I do think he's going to hit more home runs this year. Ooh, more home runs than what? What's your over under on home runs? Or what's your guess on home runs, I guess I should say. And he just ran so much last year. Yes. I do think the team is just going to be, they're going to be out in first place for a lot of the year. I I, I know um, the man at Snicker has said, like, they're just going to let him do what he wants to do. They don't want to, like, manage him and tell him not to run. If he wants to run, they're going to let him run. I could see, the problem is I could see him getting close and then pushing it to try and get back to 4070. I would put his over-under on home runs around, like, 46 and a half. And I don't know what I would take. You want that 50 John, 50. John Fusco is our gambler here. So, uh, uh, John, have you made a bet on fan graphs on Acuna's home runs? I know he's not. I would take on, I would take the under on both those 46 and a half home runs and 65 steals. I would take the under on both. Yeah. You're basically betting. Will he do again? Something that no one else has ever done. Right. And that's a crazy bet to ever make. So I, I would. What's, what's more, more impressive? 50, 50 or 40, 70, 50, 50. Yeah. And I yeah, know that, that's, that's, that's that been power a already, already what he showed the, the power and speed are unmatched, but if he could somehow get to 50, which so few players have ever hit 50 home runs in the history of the game and have 50 steals, that would just be incredible. Yeah. If someone could look this up. I'm curious what the number is. What's the most number of steals in a 50 home run season? I'm guessing it's like 15. George Foster with uh seven. I don't know. It's got to be double digits. I think even I think Aaron Judge stole more than ten when he hit sixty, whatever, a couple of years ago. Yeah, so it's yeah, be probably. I would see under fifteen. Yeah, I'm guessing under twenty, but we'll see. All right, the, the inquiring minds want to know, Shelley. Can you see the turtle now? Can you see the turtle? Yeah. In your Instagram, and if Very so, important. send it to Chris. All right, so uh, Jeff, I want Jeff. I have a question for you. Yeah. Do you have a couple guys that you feel fairly confident? As of right now, March 28th, between now and let's say September 1st, that give me two guys that you think their card values will have increased, will have gone up in this well, time period. It's funny because that's kind of what we spent the offseason looking for, right? And we thought we found it for sure in one guy. <laughs> yeah, we didn't though. <laughs> and that guy was Garrett Cole, which we yeah. finally decided to invest in. He's on a Hall of Fame trajectory coming off a Cy Young season. He looked great. Oh, wow, there we go. Willie Mays at 24 steals. All right. When he so hit 50. 51 home runs and 24 steals. Jesus, that guy was good. So a 50-20 season. Okay. All right. Trout's going to hit 50. I hope so. I hope uh, so. So, yeah, yeah. so, yeah, Cole was one of those guys because we thought for sure that the season would would lift him up. Um, he's no longer one of those guys. Uh, <clears throat> I would say a couple guys that we've already talked about, and one of those is Rafael Devers. And already his cards have started to move this spring, probably because he played so well in the spring, but not a lot. And we talked about round numbers, and he's a guy that's on a tra trajectory to get some of those round numbers. He started early enough that he's yep. compiling a lot of stats while he's uh, while he's still young. I think he's – is he 26 this year? This, I believe this is technically his age 27 season, what he's going into right now. 27, He'll turn okay. 27 this year. Um, so that would be one of my picks, Rafael Devers. Okay. And the other guy is another guy we've talked about, and especially based af based on how he played with his injury last year, I'm going to say Manny Machado, because okay. now I feel like he is healthy. He's going to put a big season together. He's still not priced where 
where a lot of the Hall of Fame path guys seem to be. So, and he doesn't have a lot of rookie cards. So I, I would say, especially if we're talking rookie cards, which is where I would stay, rookie cards or uh, desired cards, desired non-rookie cards, maybe super short prints of them. I think uh, Devers and Machado are guys that I would look to be higher on September 1st. Yeah, I agree. I, I like those two guys as well. Um, I feel like we end up talking about kind of the same people all the time. We do. I mean, and it's never going to be like prospects. Like you look at guys like Holiday, Langford, even even someone like Evan Carter. I would almost say those guys are near guaranteed to be lower in September than they are now. Like what? I mean, I don't know what Langford could do to justify what his prices are right now. And Churio, even though Churio. even if he wins the rookie of the year, like I'm predicting he might. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, def um, that's definitely baked in, even yeah. though he's just a zygote. I mean, he's 20 years old. That. <laughs> money is already priced into his card. So I feel like it's easier to predict cards that'll go the other way. Is there cards. a particular part of his a musculature, Jeff, that you think uh, could help drive the cards? Well, um, I was thinking maybe his uh, his lower legs. Uh, lower legs? Yes, his calves. Ah. <laughs> his, his calves are going to are going to power him over the edge. I'm more of an upper uh, no, but he, he he is showing some nice power through those 20-year-old glutes, so I mm -hmm. feel like he's going to he's there going is. to be a great player, but his cards don't have as much room to grow as some of these other guys. I agree. I, I do think my number one guy who I whose cards I expect to increase this season is Mookie Betts. I just I I feel like it just I, we've been waiting. How many years have we been waiting for that? I is and, this the year? And there's little bumps. He gets little bumps. When like like last year when he had that crazy month of uh August. August, thank you. Yeah. His cards went up. And yep. then people were like, oh, it was just a month, not looking at the at the career. But I mean, he has a shot at a hundred war. Yeah. He legitimately has a chance at that. And very, very few people will ever, ever have a chance Especially at that. Especially with, with the shortstop war position bump this year Absolutely. that he's gonna get. Yep. Yeah, he'll get some uh, flexibility bump uh as well. I mean. Yeah, so Betts is very, very high on my list of guys. If you're, you know, I know prospects are flashy, but but Betts is very, Betts is exciting. Betts is a better gamble by far. And he's another guy. He has very few autographs. He has yeah. doesn't have any autographs since 2015, leftovers yeah. from his rookie year. He has no on-card autos since 2014. Yeah, and he doesn't have a lot of rookie cards, as it were. So, yeah. Uh, okay, <laughs> Langford was intentionally walked. How's that for respect? Wow. His wow! First, first major league game. First major league game. Are you That's worried about uh, Yamamoto, Chris? No, no. I, I feel like I mean he wasn't going to go deep into that game anyway. I don't think anyone was expected to go deep into those early games because they're not that far along in spring training. Yeah. But I mean, think of the nerves. Think of the level of excitement. This is his first start for his new major league team. He signed that contract. There's all this hype, and it's so close you know, to, to where he's from. It was just, it was a lot. It was a lot of pressure, a lot of excitement. And I think you could have penciled in a bunch of walks. So, I mean, no, I'm not worried about Yamamoto. I, we saw him in spring training. We saw the stuff. The stuff is there. There may be a little learning curve. Yeah. But I, I'm not, I would not be concerned. And maybe Jeff owns him in fantasy league. Jeff, are you concerned? Uh, well, considering looking at how he started and Glasnow's first start was and the six walks that, Framber Valdez had today, and I'm playing Chris in a uh, strikeout to walk category league. Uh, so yeah, I'm a little concerned with that, but no, for the season, I'm not concerned. Yeah. Okay, Chris, a couple things here. Uh, Thorson wants to know prediction for two platinum gloves. Is is uh, Tatis going to repeat with that platinum glove? He was so good in right field last year. Um, let's platinum gloves are tough. Yeah. Like, who are you really the best? Like. Glove guys. I, I honestly, I just, I don't know. Since Andleton Simmons um, sort of retired, it's hard to really spot a fielder that seems arm like, you know, leaps and bounds better than everybody else. But, but yeah, yeah I mean, I don't know. It seems like incredible. such a crapshoot. Nobody yeah. would have guessed Tatis came no. in this year. Uh, Star Arenado is too old. What? Uh, I said Arenado is too old. Like Machado, yeah. not anymore. Uh, man, it's tough. Let me think about that for a little bit. While we Jeff and I ramble on about some other stuff, yeah, it'll be fun to see. Maybe maybe there can be some of these youngsters, some of this new generation that takes over and really sets a tone. 
defensively. Uh, Star Huddle says he predicts Estuary Ruiz with the 180 season. Hey, he could get 80 steals and he could get that one home run if he stays in the lineup for sure. Yeah, I saw that. That's uh, and by the way, that guy on the on the uh, uh, Cardinals, his last name is Scott. I think it's like Vic, Victor Scott, maybe Victor Scott the uh, second. Yeah. Yes. Um, incredibly fast. He stole a base on Will Smith today. Again, not the hardest thing to do, but I mean, he stole it by like 10 steps. So he might be a guy that like, he just bats eighth or ninth, eighth or ninth, puts up a 301 on base percentage and steals 75 bases. Well, especially since the Cardinals are lacking depth out there. And now with Carlson hurt, as we saw. Yeah, that was a bummer. They need to, he, they need somebody to put out there. Yeah. The last Japanese pitcher that overachieved, I will tell you, David S who's asking about this. I think one of the best games ever pitched in baseball history was pitched by a Japanese player. Uh, Hideo Nomo threw a no hitter in Coors Field. That's true. Which, yeah. Back in like the era of like whatever goes, take whatever you want to take, whatever supplements you get your hands on. I mean, he no hit that Colorado team in Colorado. It's just when I, every time I think about that, it makes my head hurt. He had a pretty good career. I think he threw another no hitter for the Red Sox, if I'm not mistaken. And he had that crazy wind up. Showing yeah. his complete back. And, and, and Dice K won a ring with the Red Sox. So, I mean, I think the issue we see with, with Japanese pitchers is their careers aren't long. But they do seem to have, like, some pretty pronounced peaks when they come over. Yeah, yeah they're good stuff. Um, so, Chris, I believe you got the uh, the turtle video has been sent to you. How was it sent? Via Instagram? I believe it was sent for Instagram. I think Shelly said he sent it to you. Hold on. Uh, so yeah, check, take a look, see if you can yeah, see that. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, Tanaka was solid, but didn't live up to the hype. Yeah. And there's always a lot of really? hype when guys come over because they're not rookies. They've been established in, in another league, even though the league might not be as, as high a quality, they're still established. So they come over and people do have expectations versus just coming out of college. All right, so I, okay. Jimmy Gwynn. I got that you sent me a message, but I have to follow you back to get it. So I requested a follow. So you have to accept that. Now, Shelly the Turtle, I don't. Boy, I tell you, it's interesting how this. I, I don't see you in my messages on Instagram unless you have like a random non-turtle related <laughs> Instagram handle. I don't see you in there. So currently, I do not have a turtle. So it was just, it was, it was promised, but no, no turtle. <laughs> yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. John says the turtle is in your mailbox. Go outside. <coughs> oh, man. If, okay, if JJ Wynn says he's, uh, he's got it. By the way, this is completely sort of mildly related, but not about baseball, but indulge me for a minute. Megan and I finally watched um, No Hard Feelings, the Jennifer Lawrence comedy from last spring. Yes. The parallels between me at like 16 and the kid in the movie were uncomfortable. It was, I, I was starting to get a little bit, I was starting to feel attacked by the movie. I'll did you have way. a Jennifer Lawrence? Sadly, no. Trust me, Jeff, if I did, it's all we'd talk about on this show. I, I was going to say, this has been, <laughs> I've you, been you hiding this story. About it. But the kid, the kid had a pet turtle, as I did uh, back in the day. And I'm positive in some of the shots of his room, he, there were baseball cards visible on the wall. <laughs> so it was, you know, but yeah, now, if anything, I'm going to have to discuss with my parents why this was not brought up. Why, you know, the why they didn't there. go out and find someone for you? Yeah, you should find, I should ask. Um, yeah. uh, Vlad, Jake says, Vlad asked Vlad hitting 50 this year. He was another of my dark horse candidates. Uh, I could see him hitting 50. I think he's going to have to sacrifice some average. Probably. And I think that maybe that's one of the things he worked on it because I know he changed, he was trying to change, make some swing changes. And I think, yeah, he just has to get more elevation and it's probably going to lead to. Not that he hit 300 last year, but yeah, I think he, his main goal was power this year. And that ball today was absolutely nuked off Zach Eflin, who, by the way, looked great for like three innings. And then the Blue Jays got to him a little bit. But, uh, but yeah, I, I will also tell you, I had I had Guerrero in two of my leagues and I, I dumped him. I dumped him. Just, I traded him for Matt Olson. I had to get rid of him to make him be good, to dis yeah. rediscover who he is. Appreciate that sacrifice for all of us. He looks yeah. skinnier. Yeah, he definitely worked out a lot, got in shape. Yeah, um, Shelly the Turtle, there's like a, a porch up there um, at that ballpark. I forget what it's called, like Homer Porch, where there's people out there drinking beer. And it went above it went above that porch. It was an absolute bomb. What was the distance on it? 450. Ridiculous. 
Yeah. Um, David S wants to know if we collect vintage or modern players. Silver Fox is a vintage collector as well. We primarily stick to modern players. Uh, Chris has a few vintage cards in his collection, but uh, we just both enjoy watching the players for better or worse, which has also caused issues. Uh, but uh, yeah, we we stick to modern. 520 in Colorado. Jamie says, just need to swing for the fences. The Jays have plenty of guys who can get on base. That's true. Yeah. Uh, he's batting second as well. Yeah, there's uh, – so Jordan's batting second and Vlad's batting second, right? And and Devers. So there's Devers, Devers down swinging first at bat. Oh, come on. Wow. Thick boy. Bring us some better news than that. I, I, yeah, I was actually about to go over there and look to see what he did uh, in his first A-B. Jeff, I just sent you the total video. JG Gwynn, this is this is spectacular. That I, I this is great. Um, so I'm just trying to figure out how I can get it on the computer so we could share it. I don't have Instagram yeah. on the, this computer. I don't know, Jeff, if you do. I do, but it's uh, I have to try to figure out this <laughs> password. You guys are dealing oh, with some yeah. old guys here. I got to try to figure out how to get because I have multiple Instagram accounts. Oh, of course, I can tell you right now. I I do not know what my Instagram password is. A hundred percent, I'll tell you that right now. I'm, I'm logged in on my phone, but right, you, so, uh, yeah, but Chris, you sent it to me, but I get a message unavailable. So I must have to, uh, yes, you're going to have to go follow. Uh, well, you know, we'll, we can, we can talk about this later, <laughs> but I promise at some point we will share. Uh, All right. Total stuff. By next week, we promise that we'll have, we'll have some turtle footage. Hold, hold the phone up to the computer. M Parson says, Oh, actually I, I can do that. There he is. Oh, I mean, that's just that. an easy thing to do. All right. Why didn't I think of this? Thankfully, there's someone smart watching the video. Oh, man. Look at this he's monster. Cruising. He's moving pretty good. He is cruising. Yeah. Oh, Chris, on, your guess... account has been hacked. Star Huddle knows that your password is Strider Thighs. <laughs> Oof. Uh, <laughs> uh, stay, stay away from my bank accounts. All right. Can we can we get a uh, a name and a size on this on this beauty? So, yeah, there he is down there. He's getting some food. We've heard that he's 25 years old. So anyway, yeah, look at that's that. that's pretty fantastic. So uh, JG right. win, that's awesome. That's great. Love that turtle. Well, I mean, hold the official, phone up to the camera. Come uh, on. Our, our official mascot. Whose turtle is this, David S? Uh, JG win. What's JG's first name? You you just said it. Something. Jimmy? Maybe Jimmy? I think. I th is that what it is? I think so. Jimmy, can one? can your turtle be the official blabbing about slabbing mascot? We'd love yeah, to. Uh, yes. We'll send you like a, a logo you can put on his back, not a yeah. sticker or anything, but you just kind of place it on his back just, and then just set it on his back gently. Thanks. Yeah, yes, uh, I suppose Sox fan, the thing is cruising exactly. That's what I thought. I was expecting a very slow moving uh, creature to appear on the screen, but uh, that turtle would probably beat a lot of us in a race. Yes, I will tell you uh, that turtle is very similar to my mom in that you think they're very, they, they seem to be very slow, but you take your eye off of them in a department store and they're fucking gone. They're gone. <laughs> they're they're right, yeah. gone. Um, Josh is just starting out a collection, Chris. Is it better for the season to focus on one player or multiple players? I mean, it's, it's logic would tell you that diversification, like anytime you're starting a portfolio in anything, you want to diversify. It's probably the, the correct, safer answer. Yeah. It's less fun that way. I mean, who do you really like? I mean, if you have a favorite team and, you know, let us know. Yeah. We're happy players to help. for a favorite team, or like like Chris and I do enjoy collecting super short prints, so we get different players because they're we're, we're collecting them from from a certain year. And parts um, we laugh, but a turtle fractor doesn't seem that impossible. We've seen a taco fractor. I don't see why we can't. See and we're seeing fractor. these we we're seeing these Easter parallels. Turtles not far oh. off. I suppose Sox fan, yes, the turtle must have great glutes to be able to cruise like that. I think oh. they must be uh, doing some serious squats there mm -hmm. over at the Win Win Residence. Uh, <laughs> the turtles are basically in a squat all the time. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> JG Wynn says, my name is Jimmy. And yes, when he's hungry, watch out, just like my wife. Well, I, I hope she's not watching. <laughs> that's the type of comparison that can get a guy in trouble. Uh, yes. Oh. What, what is the tortoise's name, Jimmy? M. Parsons wants to know the important part. Uh, mm -hmm. For Pete's sake, I'm all in on Pete Alonzo. Yes, you're, you seem to be a collector who really is going with one guy and sticking to him. And there's a lot to be said for that, too, because with so many sets these days and so many cards yeah. coming out for uh, of all these players, it's really hard to keep track of all of them. So if you just have one specific player that you can follow through every set. 
Uh, for Pete's sake, I got For Pete's sake, are you also a Mets fan? Because I feel like Pete Alonso is probably high on the list of players likely to be traded this season. Right. You know, the Mets are not expected to contend. Assuming they don't, I think it's very likely they trade him and then sign him again. And man, he also boy, he looked good in the Seattle Mariners jersey. Although that ballpark kills most right-handed power hitters, but I, Pete Alonso hits the ball so far. And for Pete's sake. What Chris says, if, if he does get traded, are you are you more a Pete fan or, or a Mets fan? Will you still yes. collect them? Will that change your, your collecting strategy if he gets traded to another year, another team? Hojo is my all-time favorite player. Yes, love Howard Johnson. And it, one thing about the 80s guys like that is it's hard to find, like, what's what's the best Howard Johnson card? Probably his rookie with the Tigers, like an 83 Fleer. Right, but it's not – I'm going to say that's not hard to find. PSA 10. I bet it's. I bet there's more of those than you think. So yeah. I don't. Is he in eighty? Is eighty? What does he? In, is he in an update set? Is he in eighty three tops? Maybe he's in eighty three tops update. Like I don't. I'm not sure. I know he's eighty three Don Russ, eighty three Fleer. I don't know. But I also wonder what parallels he has. Does he have like a ninety one Desert Storm, Desert Shield? Does he have a ninety three Finest Refractor? Like I'm curious. If you have a Howard Johnson collection, what is Howard Johnson's best card? Yeah, that's a great question. And the fact that they do. In a lot of sets, they still use retired players, but they don't use a lot of guys like that that were iconic in their time. You don't see a lot. Of, in fact, I i don't think I've ever seen a Howard Johnson card in these sets. You get the same cards. You get the same Nolan Ryan or... Uh, oh, like in Stadium Hattie, Club, you mean? Not, like but, big checklist. Are the, I've not seen yeah, Howard Or Johnson. Ginter. Ginter does retired players. Any, any, yeah. Anyone that does retired players or that could do a super short print, you... Throw Pete Alonzo and put a Howard Johnson in the Mets uniform as his SP or, or variation. Yeah. So Josh R is the gentleman who was asking about Freddie Freeman before. Um, so he's still looking for a uh, diamond parallel. I do think that's for the budget you mentioned. I do think that's still the best the best place to go. Um, if if you want to message me on Instagram, uh, Baseball Card Addict, we can talk about other Freeman cards. You know, we can we can send some listings back and forth. And it would eat up a lot of this time. <laughs> I do think that the Topps Diamond Rookie is is your best bet for under 200 bucks. Yeah, the Diamond Anniversary really Parallel is awesome. Uh, for Pete's sake, says, my favorite is from Upper Deck Landscape Art Style. I got my brother assigned one. So what year is that from? We're yeah. talking about a Hojo card, right? It has the big apple on it in the background. Great. I bet it's an amazing card. should send yeah. us a picture of that. Yeah, there's some great uh, Mets big apple shots out there for sure. Um, hold on. What was I just going to say? Oh, J-Rod doubled in his first at bat. That's good to see. Yeah. Howard Johnson turtle shell parallel. You know, speaking of turtle, there were cards from the Ninja Turtle movie from, uh, what was that? 1990, 1991. Yeah. That might be a fun rip. We could do, uh, during a blabbing episode, just kind of go through a couple packs. A couple packs of turtles. Yeah. It'd be fun to find that. We'd probably find it. Uh, professor's dugouts is the fact that I just looked up Hojo desert shield makes me think I have a problem. Yes, we all do. Douglas Campbell, welcome to the show. Hey, we, uh, better late than never. Absolutely. I couldn't say the year. There are so many. Okay. Yeah. Oh, a vanilla ice turtle card. Do they make cards from the sequel? That I I tell you, as a as a time capsule of Americana, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle sequel, when Vanilla Ice shows up and starts rapping about turtles, like you really question everything you think you know about the world. That this yeah. happened. Imagine showing to that to kids now. What? They look take a look at it. Uh, so um, Fox says, do we have any Chrome MVP buyback stamp cards? I will say, not only do we not have any, I never saw any. I've never seen any. Year. I never saw an Aaron Judge or the... Goldschmidt. Jeez. Yeah, Goldie. <laughs> oh my God, my brain. I never saw one of those come up on eBay. Never saw them for sale. They're supposed to be like 10 autoed one. I never saw those either. In packs, right? In packs, yeah. Come in packs, yeah. Yeah. Uh, must be a 20, 20, yes. Uh, Adam, yeah, I think that's one of Acuna's absolute best-looking cards. Uh, the one with the World Series ring. Oh, yes. Fantastic. And the fact that the autos with that image are only the 91 flashback designs make them even better. Love those 91 flashback. Civilization yeah, peaked. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> the, the peak of Western civilization, yeah. I mean, speaking of the peak of Western civilization, Jeff, you want to look at a couple eBay listings that I pulled yeah, up? Yeah, a couple eBay listings before you hit the chunks. Okay. All right. Hold on. So speaking of a couple names that were mentioned, let's start with this card. 
Uh, this ended uh, yesterday or uh, was was purchased yesterday. Saying okay. ended yesterday is a little bit strong. Um, this was up on eBay. Da, 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 right here. Bang. So this is a Wyatt Langford first Bowman Chrome gold auto. Still in its uh, Topps Redemption. Hmm. You know, original form, if you yeah, will. Beauty. So the listing of this was $6,500 or best offer. That's a lot of money for a guy. Never Again, played sold, a major league. This game. sold yesterday. So this sold the day before his major league debut. So he had done nothing. So uh, for you some context, can you, can, you, can you throw out the price of a, a player we might know who has a similar card, what that would go for? Uh, the man. gold Bowman Chrome first. I, I will actually, because we know, let me just pull up, give me a second. I will pull up market movers and we'll look at this, which sold um, last week, actually during our show, a Freddie Freeman first Bowman Chrome gold auto. Okay. Wait. And that's graded. That's this is graded gem mint. Yep. That's sold for about the price that you're saying they're asking for. The Wyatt Langford. So this Freddie Freeman last week sold for six thousand six hundred dollars. The Wyatt Langford was listed at sixty five hundred or best offer, and it sold. So, oh my gosh, what do we think that Wyatt Langford sold for? All right, chat. Let's see. Let's see some votes. Uh, Jamie says sixty four fifty. Man, um, mm -hmm. I would say five thousand even. Okay, five point seven k from Professor. Just looking at that, man, wow. Seeing that Freddie. Yeah, I kind of I kind of I kind of feel like we should have bought this Freddie Freeman. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of embarrassing, really. Yeah. Uh 5,500, a couple of guesses, 5,900, 6,500. So full full asking, thick boy says. Okay. Um how long was it up there, incidentally? A more I, I don't know. 3K. I, I, I don't know how long uh, I don't know how long the car was was available for. I just know that it sold, and I know what it sold for. All right, fifty eight hundred. Okay, so the most of the guesses are fifty eight um, six six point two. So some people okay. are saying close to asking. Okay, I will say I also think it's worth noting. M Parsons has looked up. There are multiple vanilla ice signed and graded Ninja Turtle cards on eBay. So. If anyone's wondering what I'll be doing when this chat is over, I'll be eating chicken chunks and looking at those vanilla ice cards. <laughs> All of a sudden, there's a spike in vanilla ice signed right? cards. The value seems to really go up. All right, so someone in this chat got it exactly right. 5200 4400 6.2. All right. One, and Jefferson says $1 in true, in true uh, price is right fashion. Price is right style. All right, so here's the deal. It went for... Full asking at $6,500. And for $100 more, you could have had a Freddie Freeman of the same card. So I wonder, what, what, what would you guys rather have? The okay, so Thick Boy, Thick Boy was correct at $6,500. Yeah. But yes, let's do it. Let's do a quick poll. Um, so Chris, let's do the, the Freddie Freeman. If you'd rather have the Freddie Freeman. Yeah. For $100 more. For $100 more, let us know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm very curious. If you if you had sixty six hundred bucks to spend on baseball cards, a good for you, but b which of those two cards would you rather have bought? Um, and will the thrill twenty two? I did see that pink. I was watching it, and it's. Uh, I, I talked about it with a bunch of uh, sort of Freeman collectors that I I, I know fellow fellow uh, geeks, and it's weird. It, it's cool because it's numbered out of five and it's really rare, but it really suffers from that. Um, Lack of knowledge that the you gotta tell somebody how rare five. it is. Yeah. 2013 is weird because we got the pinks out of five, the camels out of 15, and then they weren't like that again. So I just don't think it's it's as valuable as an out of five normally would be. I think the reds became out of five in 15, and then that has stayed out of five. And those I think are more valuable than a random pink in 2013. Just throwing that out there. I would have loved that card. If it was under 200 bucks, I absolutely would have would have bid on it. But once yeah, it got it over starts to get priced out of any sort of reality uh, uh and we it was a a clean sweep until we got to jeremy who said uh go gators he's going with wyatt professor okay. who works at the university of Flo florida where langford played college ball and that's too high for him uh so pretty 
almost a clean sweep. Jeremy, we'll see. It'd be interesting to see at this point in one year from now, which card is going to be the higher value. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's very, it's interesting. And uh, Thor's and Collectibles points out, imagine being the guy who spent half a mil on a, Guerrero, on a Guerrero card. Like that makes my, like I, I sweat. Like that makes my skin itchy to think about. It's still better than the Wander card. Yeah, that's very true. 400,000 on the Wander card. Uh, Jefferson makes a good point here for even though we're not vintage collectors, I think both Chris and I can appreciate this. A 33 Gaudi Lou Gehrig at a PSA three is going for 4K. So for for 4K and two and a half thousand dollars, you could have a Lou Gehrig PSA three 33 Gaudi or a gold card of a player who's never played a major league game. Time. Yeah, it's that's crazy. That's sort of the hobby, the current hobby in a nutshell. But I also I think whoever bought that Freeman got an absolute steal. Like that, you oh, put those two cards. One of those two things, either Langford's too expensive or Freeman's too cheap. Yeah. Are we really penciling in Langford for three thousand hits and four hundred home runs? Like that's asking a lot. It's 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 a lot baked in, if you will, to that price. It's a lot baked in for sure. Jefferson says if you're taking him, you're banking on hitting hit, him hitting six hundred plus home runs. Right. Yeah. What would he have to do? in any world to justify that a three-time MVP, maybe lead his team to multiple championships. It's just, it's beyond, it, yeah. it's beyond just, any sort of reasonable yeah. guesses as to what he could do. And the stuff that we have seen at, off the field issues that we have seen other players have, it just makes you less, less inclined to spend big money on a young player. At least Freeman's 34 now with a wife and kids. And like, it seems like, you know, He's established sort of being a reputable person. Obviously not impossible that he's got a bunch of like kids in Thailand or something, but it seems unlikely at this point. Jeremy's right. They did walk Langford today. So he's got one, one intentional walk on his resume. Uh, yeah. Dick Boy says, I'm torn. I collect Freeman, but Langford could be Trout 2.0. It's crazy, but his body type may be one of the only I'd bank on for a prospect. Yeah. It's true, but we're also looking at age. I mean, when Trout came up, he was at least three years younger, I want to say, than Langford is. So that's an issue as well. But yeah, but that's, I think the, the key part of that <laughs> statement is could be, yeah. or he can be. I mean, we know kind of what Freeman is. And there's like, for Jeff and I, at least for, I, I think maybe it's like an older collector thing. We're in our forties. We we're less comfortable putting out big money for guys that haven't done anything yet. And yeah, that they could be incredible. He could be Acuna 2.0. He could be the next Mike Trout. He could be better than Acuna, but like, I don't know. I, I can't, I have a hard time putting out that kind of money, Jeff, when I don't know what a person is yet. Right. And even you, you say Acuna, who is one of the more expensive players in the hobby as well as he should be, his gold is what, like an eighteen dollars to $20,000 card, let's just say, yep. for comparison's right. sake. So for all that Acuna's done, to be even paying a third of the price for a Langford, it just doesn't even seem, I don't know. I don't and Acuna is what, like, is he like two and a half years older than Langford? <laughs> yeah. to really put that in perspective yes yeah uh thorson brings another up another point this so still with modern collecting but outside of the post 2018 era he bought a nine and a half ten rookie refractor auto of korea for 150 dollars, and he's got 40.8 war at age 29 yeah korea is a really interesting he's gonna He's just an interesting player because the yeah. hobby doesn't necessarily like him right now, but a couple big moments in the Twins postseason and they could. He's got a great postseason resume. Already. He's going to be right. one of those guys with like 65 war when he retires. And what do we do with those players? Yeah. he's If he has a bounce back year this year, it's really going to help his card. So that's yes. great. And David S., you're right. If Let's say he puts up a 30-50 season. Like, can it go up? I, I, I don't even know. Yeah. 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 Professor's dugout, that's always a fun stat that, yes, Juan Soto is younger than Adley Rushman. He's got 150, 160 home runs, I think, in his career. All right. I got another card, Jeff. This one was near and dear to me. I, I was actually runner-up to this card, so I'm curious oh, boy. what we all think about it. This was, was it a, a Garrett Mitchell? That was a Garrett Mitchell. Uh, sadly, no. Uh, here we go. Ooh. Now we did, if you remember, we did a whiteboard of all his gold refractors. And eventually I did, I sort of just looked myself in the mirror. I'm like, there's too many. I can't, I can't buy one. So I've yet to purchase a gold refractor, but this red came up and hot damn, does this red look sexy. Ooh. It's got the cup. It's got the shield. The yeah. and it's, got a better, match. it's got a better image than his, uh, I hate to say it, than his, than his flagship card. Like he's clearly hit a bomb right here and it's just tossing the bat aside. 
you can see his, his, his thick legs are right there, you know, so you know his, his glutes are probably flexed. That was just right. so he could drink, just as an excuse to drink. You know, I, this is just a gorgeous card. How many reds are we going to see? There's five. How many are actually going to show up? So, so I, was, I was excited to bid on this. I can't quite see. Is that a mint nine, I'm guessing? Mint nine, yes. All right. So let me know what you guys think. This ended, this went for bids. So let me know what you think this went for. Oh, yeah. I see a little centering left to right. Might have got it the... A little bit. The nine. Um, boy, I have no idea what this market is. I Absolutely no idea. Uh, I didn't either. It, it, it changed a lot in the last five seconds. <laughs> I can tell you that much. I don't know. 500 bucks? Um, no. 325 is a guess? 320. I'll tell you right now. If anyone in this chat... <laughs> has a copy, has one of the other four copies of this, and they'd sell it for three hundred and twenty-five dollars. Uh, I will, I will give it to you right now, please. Two fifty, five fifty, seven fifty, one thousand, nine thousand for Jamie. Chris, okay. if you were, I hope you weren't spending nine thousand dollars on this. Come on, I, I did not bid nine thousand dollars on this. Uh, JG Win says two point six. Yeah, it runs the gamut. Nobody here knows. We're all in the same boat. We don't right. know what a Michael Harris. It's crazy. Is. Yeah, I mean, because market is. Because these things don't come up for sale. So it's really yeah. hard to know. Someone's just really going to want it. At know? least he's played a game of Major League Baseball at this time. Yes. And he's actually got a pretty good career war for two. He's like like Julio. He's got two seasons under his belt. And he's and he's got about eight or nine war. So, I mean. All right. Well, judging from your reaction, <laughs> our first okay. guesses were way too low. Way so too I'll, low. I'll, I'll double mine and say $1,000. Okay. We got a couple more guesses. Yep. John Fusco yeah. says 900. Thorson's rolling at 770. We had 750. Okay. And he won wow. rookie of the year. Yeah. And and he showed that after a slow start last year, he was about one of the best players in all of baseball over the last four months. So he, he sure was. Yeah. Uh, while we're thinking of that, David says, Do you guys know the Rays put up a banner when they make the wild card? Pretty funny. Yeah, that's a pretty that's a pretty low threshold, especially now when 12 teams make the playoffs. Yeah. I'm fine with it. Celebrate it. You get to play extra games. Go for it. That's, that doesn't bother me. I, that, that's no. totally fine. It's a long, it's a grueling season. You get yeah, to make. I, I don't mind it either, but it is. That's a really low threshold. Maybe if they win a playoff game, uh, right. one thousand two hundred seventy-two eighty-eight. Thorson says maybe he that was sounds the like winner. a very specific guess. So, have any others been graded? One thousand two hundred seventy-eight dollars. What was it? I, I I switched the screen over. I'll oh. zoom in. Hold on. Oh, so Thorsten, <laughs> Thorsten looked it up. Yeah. We have ambitious viewers. All right. Well. Yeah. All right. So we were a little closer when I when I doubled my yeah guess. So um, yeah, any twelve hundred bucks. Wow. It, it was uh, it was pretty low uh, with like six seconds left. Can, can um, you give us a, a ballpark? Like what were what was it looking at? And then it was under a thousand bucks. It was under a thousand with six seconds left. So I put up, uh, I think I bid like 12, I think I bid 1257.88 was my bid. And this person blew me, like, I don't know what they bid, but it jumped up the requisite, you know, $25. So I, I you know, it's gone, I, but that's probably a card we may never see for sale again. You may never we, see it again. Yeah, I figured that was that was a shot. I, I I was gonna sell a Freeman to cover it if I happened to win. Yeah, it's a good reminder that those don't come up that often, and if you do see it, you may not get another chance. So you might feel like it's an overpay when you're putting up the bid, but at the same time, if he turns out to have a great career, that could be one of his very best cards ever made. Yeah, outside of his his first Bowman autos, that's probably his best non. That's probably his best rookie card, right? Because he's got twenty thousand rookie autos, yes. so giving something red, red's always going to stand out. I mean, Especially that car was different. incredible. I thought that car was beautiful. I, I was beautiful. excited with the prospect of it. I felt fairly confident when I hit my bid, and I'm like, I'm pushing what I could afford to do. And it was under a thousand at the time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And there was that long spinning circle. You know? Yeah, and you're waiting to see if it was yours. Yeah, but no, I'm well, guessing uh, someone bid like two. I bet someone put like a two K bid on it. Because those reds are reds are like the, the the flagship clears. Like you just never see them. You never see them, right? Uh, Douglas Campbell does make a good point. You can use that money towards uh, towards Jack Daniels. Love That's Jack true. Daniels. That's true. Thankfully, I can buy a lot of Jack Daniels for significantly less uh, at Costco. 
Amori Smith mentions this. This might be something you know about, Chris. I don't know. Questions about some of his patch autos not being in some of the recently released products? I don't know. You know we're, we're not big patch auto guys, so I'm not sure if you're talking like Dynasty and Definitive or something. He's supposed to have patch autos and they're not in there. I don't know about any of that. Uh, Will the Thrill asked if any others were graded. I... I feel like there was one other one on the uh, pop report. I thought it was lower, but I might be confusing it with someone else. I don't know. Just check on the PSA site. I, I'm not sure. There were no gems. The nine was definitely the, the only nine, the highest, the highest one graded. I mean, yeah, Jimmy says, I think that's low for a red to five. I know it's PSA nine. Yeah, PSA, the, the grade doesn't matter as much on something that rare. If it keeps on playing no. great, could be a steal. Right. And that's just the hard part with a red like that. They come up so infrequently. You don't even know when you're going into bid where you could be yeah, i mean you it could be at 500 it. it could be at 5000 you just don't know and if you have one other person that really wants the card and really thinks it's valuable he might have went up to 2000 3000 yeah. dollars you just don't know that's a, i'd love to know what the, we always say when you when you finish second you want to know what the other person bid i would love right. to know what the bid was but yeah i mean like a red you just they're in, they're almost impossible to comp like one comes up you can't go look and see what the last one sold no so you're just kind of about on an island you're like like chris said you got to look at what you can afford if you have a card you feel like you could get rid of to replace it with you're like all right well like if i can if i know i can get a thousand bucks for this card i can go up to that for for this this red and take your chances yep okay all right i got two more so let's get to them let's get to them pretty quick here's another right. guy that uh jeff's american league MVP pick. Ooh. Uh, this is a card that I think we're going to see bought and sold quite a bit in the next few weeks. Um, so this is his Juan Soto's Bowman's Best Rookie Auto. It's the base card. It's not numbered. But, you know, here it is, a PSA 10. Really nice, bold, uh, bold auto, all on the card. Very wow. high pop, about a hundred of these at P in a PSA ten. But Jeff, we could talk for hours about how few Juan Soto on card rookie autos there are. Yes, and that is why I, I own one of these, and I'm very interested. In fact, because I was thinking about selling it and putting it towards a different Soto card, so I'm interested, very interested to know what the market is on this card right now because I have no idea. Yeah, I it's 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 an interesting card, like. Like I said, if you're if you're a Juan Soto fan, you're a Yankee fan, and you want to get into the Juan Soto game, this is the card. This is your entry level Juan Soto card. It's on card. It's autographed. It's either this or the Heritage, and the Heritage is going to outsell this by a lot because there's way way fewer of them. This is definitely the way to go. I wouldn't buy a Topps Chrome sticker auto. I don't know, Jeff. You can let me know what you think about that. I, I would I'm not gonna... buy a Topps Chrome sticker auto either. I I would stick to the on card. This is great. Uh, I don't know. Is it? <sighs> I'm yeah. trying. It, it really rode the roller coaster because it was a two thousand dollar card at one point. Oh yeah. I'd like to. I'd like to hope that it. This one went for over eight fifty. That's where I'm hoping the market is. But uh, so I, I guess I'll go with that. Yeah, you're a little over overexcited. Um, I think it may. It can get there, but the current price is seven hundred and twenty nine dollars. Oh, professor said 700 so he was right yeah, on target uh, yeah, i think boy saw one at a card show for 650. oh gobble that up all day yeah 650 cash at a show is pretty great um yeah i may hold mine a little bit longer to try to get a little bit more back i know i paid i can't remember exactly what i paid but way more than that i know i, I at one point i had two of them one i bought very cheap and one i bought for a lot so yeah, it's not it's not okay. rare in and of itself, but when you factor in how few on card rookie autos he has, then suddenly it looks pretty rare. Yeah. Um, Thick Boy says he bought an Acuna Atomic instead. Oh, okay. Uh, real quick, while you're pulling up the other one, Chris Adam says, "Do you guys have the same feelings as Teapot on RPAs and baseball being the next big thing?" No. Uh, short answer is no. If you watch. If you watch the spit, the latest spitball, and we talked a lot about this, and Scotty B and Teapot had a quite a debate on whether or not RPAs, rookie patch autos, which are huge in basketball and football, would be big in baseball. The point I did agree with Teapot on is there may be some renewed interest because a lot of 
fans of those sports will be coming back to Tops because Tops Fanatics uh, Fanatics is getting the license. So there's going to be Tops Chrome basketball again, Tops Chrome football. So those people might be exposed to baseball and want to get in the baseball market, but I don't think they're going to be as huge as as Teapot does. Maybe there's some room in the 2014 through 2018, like up through Acuna. But um, yeah, overall, I, I, I didn't get too many too many minutes in in that conversation. But if you watch, if you stick around till the end, you'll see my my point of view. I just don't think they're going to be as huge. They're beautiful. Dynasty is beautiful set. Yes, they are fantastic looking cards, and there's a lot about them that I do like. But I think I think a box of Dynasty is like a thousand dollars. Crazy. Who the hell? I mean, who can afford that? That's absurd. Yeah. I mean, but you can buy like some of the, you can buy some of those cards for like less than fifty dollars afterwards. Like that's just an obscene gamble, like a laughably obscene gamble. They do, they they do look great, but there are like multiple products. And Jeff, I'm sure you guys talked about this. There's at least five sets that have rookie patch autos in. Oh, there. Scotty pulled them up. There's there's like fifteen. Oh, he there's way more. Um, and and yes, and there's there's multiple images. So for Adley, even in Dynasty alone, he has. They're numbered to 10, but he has nine different images numbered to 10 autoed. So uh, for Pete's sake, I'm glad you watched it. Yes, all I've said so far is I had to remind them to explain to our audience what a rookie, what an RPA is, a rookie patch auto. It's a very common term in basketball and football collecting circles, but not a lot of baseball fans know. So yes, that is, that is the one word I got in in the first 20 minutes. Yes, and to further uh, a couple of these, uh, I think uh, Thorson says he hit Buxton's one of one Nike swoosh. Like specific cards like that, I think are fantastic, and they will those are going to like stand out and and have some value. But like these things are they're big in other sports. The the first Bowman Chrome Auto is always going to be the card. It's always yeah. just going to be the card because at some, for some of these guys, the 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 RPAs, the Dynasty are like three, four. I mean, I think Devers, yeah, Devers is like three years after his first Bowman Chrome Auto, four years after his first Bowman Chrome card. So it's just never going to carry the same weight. And there's so many sets that have them. It's hard to figure out which is going to be like the one that we're supposed to want. And we could easily yeah. segue into like a Bowman first versus rookie card. Yes. Conversation. Which we should have a conversation sometime about that. I'll just say that that during the conversation, I mentioned a teapot that at, at a show at one of the Burbank shows, Chris and I saw a guy with an entire case of Nolan Ryan patch autos. And they're not rookie patches, but they're patch autos. And it was almost blinding how many there were and how do you decide which is best and 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 teapot said he knew exactly that guy he's seen he's seen the same thing so it just yeah. becomes a little overwhelming like sfo Sox fan says and i made this point too if they tie it to specific events like the debut like the rookie debut patch they could be big if they had uh patches from when acuna stole his 70th base or pieces of the base things like that that are very specific i think those would be huge for baseball fans but just the general one of a, a patch that they put on even before they play a game. I don't think that's going to be, that's going to be huge. Amori, we're not going to be pumping the prices. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't worry about that. But I would, if you want to say like someone said, like when they tie to big events, like the debut, they could be huge. So yeah, that's exactly like, I think tops Chrome has done that with the debut patch. We just hope they keep doing that every year. And I don't care if there's 300 of those rookie autos in Chrome update, they have to keep doing that. That's a fantastic idea. That's always going to be that player's best rookie card possible. Better than the Chrome Super Super Fractor, better than anything else. Or or do it again for their first hit. Get their jersey from their first hit when they when they their first game and market that. And then I think I think that's what uh baseball collectors will latch on to. Yeah, real quick, I see David S said which steroid guy will get to the Hall of Fame first. And uh Thorsten <laughs> said A Rod in his opinion. I'm gonna say no. Anyone that's actually been suspended, I don't think they're ever getting in. But someone yeah. like Bonds and Clemens. Bonds. I could see the the veterans a veterans group putting Bonds and Clemens in. I think because, Bonds I mean, and Clemens are the first the first hitter and pitcher in for that's sure. That's who it has to be. It has to be Bonds and Clemens. It's got to be those two guys, and they should go in together just to sort of say like, yeah, this happened. We all let it happen. We all enjoyed watching it while it happened. So let's not yeah. get Agreed. all holier than now after it, that. It's a whole segment of this the sports history. Yes, uh, Jimmy, Jordan Alvarez in, in the video. And if anybody wants to know more about what we're talking about, please, uh, Teapot is on the Market Movers channel yep. as part of Sports Card Investor. And he put out a video about rookie patch autos being the next big thing in baseball. And if he had money to invest, he would do it there. We took on that conversation in Spitball and Cards where we got together with Scotty B and Filmington and Chris and I joined Teapot and we have a roundtable discussion in our in our last video we talked about this. So please check out Spitball and Cards 
for a little more about this conversation. But Scotty did show the Jordan Alvarez, his rookie patches, and there were like two dozen different brands of rookie patches. And then even within those brands, there are multiple ones. So it's, yeah, it's a little, it's a little overwhelming. Yeah, it, it, it can be a lot. Um, it could just be a lot. It's yeah. I mean, I wish, I wish they would just bring it down to like one, maybe like two sets is even too much. Like one set. I don't, I don't know. But yeah, the one of ones in Dynasty are probably the ones that have the best shot. Ah, uh, hold I, on. We got a, a, a Devers warning. I, I believe I see Devers and then oh. a two run. Ooh. I hope that means home run. Maybe he's got, maybe he had diarrhea twice. I mean, we don't know oh. what that means, Jeff. He had the runs twice. Uh, Devers with a bomb. Let's fucking go. Oh, there it is. I, listen, I will drink to Devers home runs. Devers blues, opposite Devers field. Hits. Opposite field. John Fusco says, just like Chris was saying that he was focused on. Yes. Listen, you come here for you. You come yeah. here for the chicken chunks talk. You stay for the Devers info. That's right. All those uh, opposite field home runs are baked in, fellas. Yes, bake them in. Bake them in. Mm -hmm. uh, chasing majors RPM might have traction, but not the next big thing in the hobby. Not sure about that. I'm I'm there with you, chasing majors. There's some pretty cool things, but um, yeah, the, the, as a Sox fan, yeah. I, I I can I live a little ways from Chris, but I can smell the chicken chunks cooking. So we probably should wrap it up there. The card went up 32 cents for Devers. Uh, Chris, what do you want to say? I got one more. I got one more auction real quick. I got All right, let's go through it. it. All right. Um, so and Langford is up with the bases loaded in the 10th. What a great opening day. Oh, my God. Thick boy, keep us updated. Give me, let's do, do, give me a pitch by pitch while I pull up this card of a guy, both of our dark horse MVP candidates. This is, of course, Manny Machado's Topps Gold uh, rookie card. This was up for bids. It ended uh, in the last few days. Can you see it okay, Jeff? Uh, I can see it okay. Um, I can zoom I in. I don't know. Oh, yeah, that looks nice. I don't 10? know. Ooh, yeah, centering is a little off, but within their range, especially what? their older range. That's all right. Um, boy, I uh, I don't know what the pop is on this. If in the how, 50s. The pop is, is in the 50s. In the 50s. Um, $650. I, I okay, all right, that's a good guess. So, I mean, like the pops for the gold the stars of today, like a Soto and Acuna, like they're going to be a lot higher. I think they're they're in the high 100s, low 200s. Uh, David, yes, they're numbered, they're numbered to the year. So, this would be 2013, correct? Yeah, number to 2013. Um, but yeah, and, and his stuff, like he's going to have uh lower pop reports, you know, on his rookies just because the hobby was smaller, not as much grading, blah blah blah. Anyway, um. We are winding down. I'm just going to go ahead and jump to it. Jeff says uh, 775. Jeremy, uh, Jamie Kerrigan says 561. All right. 561. Now, so, I, I, mean, yeah, I, I think this that's low. I think it this does is a great seem time. low. The right left centering would bother me. So, a I probably bit. would, would, yeah. But it yeah. does seem low. Again, yeah, he's a potential Hall of Fame path guy, pop in the 50s. I feel like it should be a little more than that. Yeah, we talk a lot about how, like, there's a generation of players at the hobby, like the Betts, the Freemans, the Machados, to a lesser extent, the Harpers. The hobby sort of looks past, and they yeah. get all excited about, um, if, yeah, about the the new shiny things, like the Jacksons and the Langfords. And David S., you are, you are exactly right. We could talk about how dumb Brian Cashman is all night. But, yeah, Machado should be their third baseman, and Harper should be in right field, and they just aren't. Yeah. And there's really no logical explanation for it. Uh, real quick, I wanted to get to uh, Douglas Campbell, who apparently hasn't been watching us very much lately because he says, WTF are chicken chunks. Luckily, M. Parsons was there to tell him about the chicken chunks that are a staple at the Parsons household after every Thursday Night Live. It's Chicken Chunk Thursday. Uh, yeah, it's it's this is a thing. I, I legitimately do look forward to this. Um, yeah. They're absolutely delicious. They sell them at Costco. Please check uh, them out. So, so, so has, has the at-bat finished? Thorson uh, says, can you imagine Langford's debut patch RPA price if there's a walk-off oh, included oh. in the story? Fielder's choice. Well, hey, a run scoring play. fielder's choice, or did they get the out at the plate? John Fusco, we need better information than that. You are, you're not a play-by-play -play guy, my friend. I, we need more information. Fouled off the last four pitches, still up. No. Okay. So somebody's on a time delay here. Still tied. All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Douglas Campbell, 3,000 miles away from me. I don't get invited for dinner. Sorry. Well, no. But, I mean, there has to be a Costco on the East Coast or, like, a BJ's or a Sam's Club or a Price Club. 
fielder's choice out at the plate. Um, Mookie yeah. or Machado's cards are going to hold up longer. This is the question. I got to go with Mookie because, like Chris yeah. said, he's a potential 100 war guy. Mookie. Love Machado, but um, not going to be there. Langford Mookie Auto's Langford. down for the fielder's yeah. choice. Yeah, the Langford Auto down 100 bucks. Mookie scored his 1,000th career run today. And he's like, what, 31, 30? Yep. Thousand the shot of two runs. I mean, that the Love 2,000 that run list. scored club is a pretty exclusive club. Uh, breaking news, Jimmy says the turtle can be the mascot for the show, which I we still haven't got the name of your turtle, Jimmy. So please send us the name. Ooh. Rangers walk off single. They walk right. off. It's a good time for us to sign off. Thanks for joining us on this opening day. We really appreciate you guys tuning in. Please like and subscribe to us. If you didn't check out our recent PSA reveals, Chris and I sweated through 50 new cards. We got back from PSA this last week, so please check those out. Uh, remember to call your parents. If they're close enough, give them a hug. Anything you want to say, Chris? Uh, I, just a reminder, next week, we hate to do this, but next week we are off. We will not be here next week. I'll be in New Orleans for my wife's You're birthday, on. and Jeff's son has like a Little League doubleheader. Yes. So yes. So we're going to miss next week. We'll miss all of you. Hopefully we'll find something to talk about in between. But uh, until then, oh, but also, watch your old stuff. Oh, yeah. But, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, also, ne ne uh, next week is, is SSP Thursday. It's the first Thursday in April. So if you're on Instagram, post an SSP, uh, tag me, tag Jeff, hashtag SSP Thursday. We'll share it. We'll try to get some more follows for everybody. Uh, we yes. just want to see these rare cards come up. And if you're and not on Instagram, that. open up a, an account just to see some of these great cards. Uh, his name is Chunk. Chunk. How appropriate is that? It's Chicken Chunk Thursday, Turtle Chunk. Thanks, everybody. We'll talk to you next week. Right. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks.